Mike Krusik has led the UCF Golden Knights to their best mark at 7-1, and one, and he will be on the sidelines for the next three years, signing the multi-year contract that was done this week. Now the focus. Can the UCF Golden Knights defeat the Auburn Tigers this afternoon? Hi, everyone. I'm Andrew Monaco, along with Charles Davis. Thanks for joining us for nighttime here on Sunshine Network. Charles, we have ourselves one of those classic matchups, UCF's offense against Auburn's defense. And as you told me before, Andrew, something has to give. UCF is used to scoring a lot of points. 65% of their possessions, they score points. And the defense of Auburn, number nine in the country, number one in the SEC. A big day for both sides. Leading the charge for the University of Central Florida, number eight, Dante Culpepper. What can we say? He does it all. He's the package we talk about. He does it against all types of competition. You see his numbers there against Louisiana Tech, Purdue, and no drop off against one double-A Youngstown straight. A great, great athlete having a great, great year. It has been a season of turmoil for the Auburn Tigers at two and six and on their second head coach gone is terry bowden but in bill oliver brother oliver as he's known to one and all in college football a defensive genius he's been a head coach before at ut ut chattanooga and now he's at, at auburn and he wants to keep this job permanently has not dropped that defense not one bit not one bit he's kept his duties as a defensive coordinator and kept the emphasis on it they have some great athletes who fly around and smack you and they will play hard for brother oliver all the focus for ucf has been on this game at have they learned anything in another big game earlier this season against Purdue? They sure have, and what they've learned is it's okay to go ahead and play your best game on national television. They, they didn't have their best game against Purdue, but today they can go ahead and relax and know that they can play with Auburn and get the job done. It should be a lot of fun for UCF today. And a chance to make some school history with a victory over the SEC's Auburn Tigers. We have the kickoff. UCF and Auburn here on Sunshine Network. UCF Golden Knights College Football on Sunshine Network is brought to you in part by Primeco Personal Communications. Primeco, proud to be a sponsor of the UCF Golden Knights on Sunshine Network. By Bob Dance Dodge, where everybody rides. And by your local Subway, the way a sandwich should be. Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn, Alabama is our setting this afternoon. The UCF Golden Knights and the Auburn Tigers on a gorgeous November Saturday afternoon here in Auburn. Perfect football weather. Andrew Monaco along with Charles Davis. We thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. You had to circle this game when the schedule, when you saw the schedule for 1998. Here we are on this afternoon. in the country in kickoff returns. He has been outstanding this season. Robert Baronis to kick off for Auburn. Homecoming 1998 at Auburn were underway. It's a low line drive that will go out of bounds. Great news for UCF. They will get the ball first and 10 from the 35 yard line. Opportunity for UCF. They will take the field. They will get their instructions on the sidelines. And then they will come to the line of scrimmage. We're set to play. UCF with the ball first this afternoon. Dante Culpepper under center. In his final season at the University of Central Florida. Four wide receivers in from the start. Eddie Mack, the lone tailback. First and 10 from the 35. Inside handoff to Mack. Mack gets across the 38. May have picked up three yards. Number 23, Edward Mack at right end. Culpepper, here, here, there's the list for what he needs for single season records. He needs four rushing touchdowns, 168 yards for, for passing yardage, 19 completions, 40 pass attempts, four touchdown passes, and 287 total yards. All those for single season records. Three of those records are his alone that he, he will be breaking from last year. And all within his reach on a second and seven from the 38 yard line. Still the four wides in for Dante. Back to long setback. Quick screen. Charles Lee. Can't avoid the pressure. He may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up a third down tonight. 
tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by Orlando Tri-County McDonald's. Cy Burley, fifth in the nation in average catches per game, seventh in yards per game. And the offensive line, Chris Lorenzi spotlight. He's got to make all the calls and checks against a stunning Auburn defensive front. Test for UCF early on a third and make it six and a half. They have to get to the 45-yard line. Three wide receivers to the near side. Pressure on Dante over the middle. Complete to Kenny Clark. He's got the first down. First and ten for UCF after the catch by Clark. Auburn defensively. Up front, the right end, Leonardo Carson, second on the team in tackles. This guy's an all-SEC performer. He's a good player, and so is Brad Ware back in the, back in the secondary. Two picks last week against, uh, against Arkansas. First and ten for UCF, converting once again on third down. They're the best in the nation in third down conversions. Conversions. Dante around the outside. He's grabbed from behind and wrestled down. Marcus Washington. That was a design play there, Andrew, by UCF. What it was was a fake inside handoff to Eddie Mack. It's a play that they show a lot out of the shotgun, an inside handoff. Dante faked it, kept it, and went the other way. It's a, full, it's a quarterback counter run is what it is. When you talk about the running game, it's not just the tailbacks and fullbacks. Also include the quarterback when you're talking about UCF. Pickup of three for Dante, nearly four. Set up a second, let's call it seven. Three wides to the near side. Culpepper. Looking to his right. Complete to Lee. Lee near the 40-yard line before he is knocked out of bounds by Antoine Nolan. Looks like Dante Culpepper has his rhythm early today, Andrew. It's being able to set up and throw the ball. The offensive line doing a good job protecting early in this ball game. Culpepper back in rhythm, three steps, makes the long throw out to the sideline. That throw, that pro throw that he can make. Not too many quarterbacks have that kind of gun to put it out there. To the 41-yard line goes Lee. First and 10, second first down of this drive for the Golden Knights. Still four wide receivers. Inside handoff to Edward Mack. Mack gets to the 40 before he is ganged up. Leonardo Carson is there on the tackle. So after the uh, gain by Eddie Mack, trying to establish that run. They're trying to establish a run, and, and if, you're, if you're able to see, you can count what Dante's doing is coming to the line of scrimmage and counting how many people are in the so-called box, the tackle-to-tackle -tackle box that Auburn has. If he counts five or less, look for a running play from UCF. He's not gaining a lot of yards now, but he's making Auburn think, and will cut down on their pressure and trying to rush the passer. Staying four wides as they've had the entire drive of the Golden Knights. Still not the long set back to the right of Culpepper. Second and nine as Mack picked up one. Clark came in motion. Dante with time. Over the middle, complete to Charles Lee. Lee with a first down inside the 30-yard line to the 28th. As this season has gone on, Charles Lee has gotten better and better. He really has. He, he caught a lot of criticism after the Purdue game because of a, a tip ball that went in the air and was returned for a touchdown by Purdue. And many people saw his momentum, break, momentum breaker for UCF. But ever since then, he's really worked hard at catching the ball. Culpepper showing great pet presence in the pocket. Good blocking by the offensive front. And he delivered a strike to Lee across the middle. Charles, what was never lost was Dante's confidence in Charles Lee. Dante never lost confidence. In fact, he has so much confidence in all of his lines receivers. First and ten for the Golden Knights. Hand off to Mack. Not a lot of room in there, but you know what, Eddie Mack? No running back this year has had a lot of success running against Auburn. No, they really haven't because that Auburn, that Auburn defensive front has really played well for them. You, you talk about Leonardo Carson, then you're talking about the front there with Charles Dorsey and Jeff Dunlap's in for Jimmy Brumbaugh who, who's been hurt. He's an all-SEC performer. But they played really well up front this year. And you see Eddie Mack trying to find some space. Just not a lot. And they have some very active inside linebackers too with Pounds and, and with Callier and Haven Fields coming in as the third guy. No gain. Second and ten. Three wide receivers make it. Three wide receivers to the near side. Two up top. Five receivers in for UCF. Mack lines up as one of those wide receivers. Dante takes off up the middle and gets to the 20-yard line. Number 27, Brad Ware on the tackle. Right now, a lot of good, a lot of big people look at look at what Mike Kruzik's doing with this offense. He's he's like a jockey now, trying to take his horse to the front. He wants to lead today. They want to get up on top of Auburn. They go empty set, five people in the pattern. Dante Culpepper with a quarterback.
back draw. What that's going to do is make the Auburn secondary be aware of what's going on with Culpepper, maybe more so than the receivers, maybe keep them at home more and give Culpepper's receivers a chance to find some more seams. Mike Cruz, that's a great offensive play caller. Dangerous here for the Auburn defense. UCF third and one and a lot of options for UCF. Dante's going to change the play. Back into the shotgun. Pass is complete. First down. Mark Nonsant makes the reception, and the drive continues to the 12-yard line. And, that's, and that, that has to go to a lot of preparation by UCF. They don't play to crowds of 80,000 that they're going to see here, so they must have done some stuff in practice this week, working on hand signals, being able to combat noise because Culpepper was able to make that audible, and they didn't have any busts on that play. Nonsant with a quick game, and Culpepper with that strong arm delivers a strike for the first down. Rodney Creighton with the coverage and the tackle for Auburn. They get a pickup officially of eight. First and ten from the 13-yard line for UCF. Still with the four wides as Clark goes in motion. Dante, a couple of steps, looking into the end zone, now scrambling. He's got Mack in front of him. He's got pressure, and Dante's going to head out of bounds, pushed out of bounds by Haven Fields, number 54. And a smart play. Very smart play by Dante Culpepper. Not try, not forcing something early. Of course, UCF wants to score on this possession. And, of course, they want to be on top early. And Dante, he had receivers in the end zone, but they were well covered. Took the play. Took what he, It wasn't open, so he just went out of bounds knowing he has another shot at it. Good, good poise and maturity. And give credit to the Auburn defense. Those are the rushing numbers for Dante Culpepper this season. And one thing you have to keep in mind is that includes sacks. Yes. You know, I mean, that includes sacks. If you take away the sacks, and lost yardage. He's probably closer to 500 yards rushing this year. Dante lost a couple of yards on that last play, setting up a second and 12 from the 15-yard line. Two right wide receivers topside. Dante, look out to Nonsan. Nonsan inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line. Antoine Nolan in there on the tackle as is number 30, Courtney Rose. What that was was a two-receiver pattern to the wide side of the field. They were trying to hit Sia Burley with a, with a kind of a post-corner move, but he was covered by the corner who sank back to the backfield and also by the safety, so they had an outlet out receiver out there. Mark Nonson just ran a short little bubble route, and all he was was an option in case Burley wasn't open. Colt Pepper saw Burley was covered, pulled it down, and, 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 and put the ball to Nonson. Kruzek on the sidelines with the third, and de third down and five. Culpepper, 6 of 6 on this opening drive. And this is a huge play, Andrew. They do not want a field goal. They need a touchdown. Culpepper, the pitch to Mack. He's not going to get the first down. There's the Auburn defense. And Haven Fields, number 54 on the tackle. We talked a little bit about their inside linebacker rotation. James Collier, Tavarius Pounds, and Haven Fields. And all three of them can run and move. Nice play moving from inside out by Haven Fields, inside linebacker against the option. Culpepper runs it to Mack, and there's Fields getting off of the block and making the tackle. Textbook form of how you play inside linebacker against the option. Waited a while on the sidelines and then sent in Fred Wazuski for the field goal. It will be a 24-yard attempt, and Wazuski has banged four field goals from this range, four of six. Wazuski gives the UCF Golden Knights a three-point lead as he caps the opening drive with a 24-yard field goal. UCF's ahead of Auburn, 3-0. Fifth time this season that the UCF Golden Knights have capped a drive with points. Four previous times they've scored on an opening drive, it's been touchdowns. A 24-yard field goal by Fred Wazuski and UCF with a 3-0 lead on the Auburn Tigers. In a drive that chewed up seven minutes and four seconds. Javier Borleggi will kick off for UCF. 15, Clifton Robinson, 17, Markeith Cooper, deep. It was a 14-play, 58-yard drive, and again, 7.04 on that drive. Very impressive drive by UCF on that one. They wanted seven points, but they weren't going to turn down three points in that situation. Good job. For Leggy's kick, we'll head it towards Cooper at the one. Markeith Cooper, good special team coverage by UCF. Cooper just got across the 15 and nothing more. 
excellent coverage by UCF on that kickoff. Tito Rod Rodriguez getting down there, and number 46 Davis also getting a piece of that action. They, they got down really fast, and you see Marquise Cooper had a little bit of indecision. Should he let it bounce and go out of bounds, or should he catch it? The ball kind of came to him and made up his mind for him. The good part about this coverage here that UCF demonstrated, now they've got Megan Auburn live a long way on offense, and their offense hasn't been very good this year. Gabe Gross is the quarterback for Auburn. And off to Montre Carter. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. The 15-yard line. Mike Palmer, number 41, on the tackle. Auburn's starting lineup brought to you by Orlando Tri-County McDonald's. Demontre Carter just carried, picked up his first rushing touchdown last week against Arkansas. Young man with a lot of talent. He's led by Geno James, an all-SEC performer at strong tackle. He's their best offensive lineman. Pickup of one yard for Demontre Carter. We'll bring up a second and nine from the 16-yard line. Broach, his first pass. Complete the pass way too high for Clifton Robinson. Paul Miranda on the coverage. Part of a UCF defense that has been terrific this season. And up front, Justin Moore leads the team with seven sacks. Young man has played well, and so has Jeff Bai at cornerback, moved into the starting lineup, and he's won the UCF Big Hit Award two out of the last three weeks. Really has played well, and his coach can't say enough great things about him. Well, well, well deserved as well, Jeff Bai. Third down and 10, and UCF would love to see Auburn in third and long all afternoon. Three wides in for Auburn. Steps up, throws, complete, but not enough for the first down. Karsten Bailey with the grab, but not enough for the first down. 26th consecutive game that Karsten Bailey has caught a pass. Bill Oliver's not going to fool around. He's going to send on the punting unit as Auburn ends up a yard shy. And boy, is this beautiful for Mike Kruzik to see, and it's even more beautiful for Gene Chizik, the defensive coordinator, to see. A three and out on the first possession for his defense. That was very, very important for them to set a good tempo. Jeremy Zills is the punter, averaging just under 40 yards a punt. Side Burley is deep for UCF. He shields his eyes, catches at the 25-yard line. Down at the 34-yard line. Tackle made by the Auburn special teams. UCF with the ball and ahead 3-0. Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn. UCF's second drive of the game. They capped their first drive with a 24-yard field goal by Fred Wazuski. And UCF gets the ball again. Terrific field position at the 35-yard line. It will be second and 10 as Dante Culpepper misfired for the first time this afternoon. Just on a shot to Mark Nonsant setting up a second and 10. 43 yards on six completions for Dante Culpepper. Three wide receivers to the near side, one up top. Mike Grant, the lone tailback for UCF. Steps up. He's got some room. He touched the ball, gets across the 40, and is taken down. He'll get close to that first down. You know, Dante Culpepper in the shotgun now. He, he's, what he's seeing is a three-man front from Auburn, but Auburn's blitzing their linebackers. And when they came, he saw a gap, pointed out that those blockers were to block, so he had a place to run. Then he was tackled for a nice game, though. It's going to be third and short. Third and make it two. Tight end Ben Goldberg into the game. Two wide receivers come to the near side. Monson and Burley, a couple of tight ends are in there. Sessons is the fullback. He's also behind as UCF is in the eye. Looking to throw on the right side. Dante pass is complete. And a first down for UCF. Mark Nonson with the reception. Against this strong Auburn front, Andrew, anything that's third and short, what we call third and short, you know, anything that's two or three yards is probably a pass situation for, for, for UCF. Just a quick good, quick sprint pass, a little about three-step drop, and then with that strong arm, Nonsant running a quick hitch route, able to throw it to the sideline. You know, for a lot of quarterbacks, that's a tough throw. For Culpepper, it's a great throw. He gets, He's able to step into it and fire it. Piece of cake for him. He makes that throw look so easy. He really makes throwing look effortless. Nonsant. With the first down catch, drive continues from the 47-yard line of first and 10. Four wides, quick hit over to Burley. Burley across midfield. 
Andover territory at the 46-yard line. The initial hit by Haven Fields, number 54, and Rob Pate also on the tackle, number 31. And to continue something I started before, what Auburn's doing is they're showing three, maybe a four-man front. It looks like there's a lot of space and some gaps to run things, but they're taking their inside linebackers and shooting them on almost every play. Uh, Auburn looks very basic in their setup, but on each play, what they're trying to do is fire out into the gaps. Brother Oliver, you know, you got a lot of twists and a lot of turns. What you see at pre-snap is not what you get after the ball is snapped. That's what Dante has to be aware of. Pickup of seven by Burley, setting up a second and three. Inside handoff to Mike Grant. Can he get outside? He can. Picks up a couple of yards. The initial hits. Charles Dorsey, the nose tackle, in on that tackle. Dorsey. Mike Grant, the senior out of Jacksonville. And Charles Dorsey, also a senior, 43 tackles. UCF in their shotgun with their inside handoff, trying to run their zone running play from Mike Grant. Good move by Grant, not continuing it outside because Auburn had closed down that lane, got up inside and got as much as he could, but made it for, put it in position to be third and short for, for UCF again. Play comes in, and there are now seven seconds on the play clock. Some late substitutions, three on that play clock. Dante with the keeper. Does he have enough for the first down? It looks like the push got him the first down to continue this drive. The play clock went from one and was just about to go to zero when Dante snapped the ball. And that was, that was very fortunate for UCF because most of the time you're taught on offense not to run a play if you get up to the line of scrimmage with that little bit of time on your play clock because that doesn't give you a chance to audible. But Dante, knowing he was going to run a sneak, wasn't worried about the audible. He just wanted to get up there and get the play off. And, and being 6'5", 250 pounds, running the sneak's always a good option for UCF. My play, I'll call it what I want. That's right. <laughs> First and 10 for UCF from the 42-yard line. Three wide receivers up to the top side and a quick hit to Kenny Clark. time today, Andrew, that they've run some variation of their wide receiver screen. The bubble screen, this time they're running it from to the slot receiver, taking the outside receiver and cracking him down on the inside. It, what it sets up eventually is the fake quick screen and try and get someone deep. And when they pull Auburn's secondary up, there it is out to Kenny Clark. He gets, he, you know, makes the play there, but look how quickly Auburn's secondary swoops to the football. I mean, one thing about them, they've been very they've been very poor on offense, but they've been very, very stout on defense. So it's kept them in game all season long has been their defense. Second and 11 for UCF. Both the Knights have to get across the 33-yard line. Big rush, Dante Avoyes looking downfield. Can he get outside? Diving after Dante. Auburn can't get him. Haven Fields is there and Dante taken out of bounds around the 36-37-yard line. If, if much more of that continues for Auburn Auburn's defensive front and linebackers, they're going to be very, very frustrated because they couldn't have asked for a better shot at him on this play. You, you see the defensive set. There's Ryan Taylor, number six outside linebacker, firing. And number 36 there, Kenny Kelly, a, a junior college transfer. He had a clear shot at him and missed. And you see Leonardo Carson, he had a shot, he missed. And Dante made positive yardage out of that play. If that continues to happen. That's very frustrating for Auburn's defensive players. Sets up a third and five for UCF. The Golden Knights, four and five on third down conversions. Across the middle. Burley incomplete. Taylor, the linebacker on the coverage. And Burley wanted a flag. That was close, Andrew. I mean, he's coming across the middle there. Looked like the contact may have been a bit early, but the officials didn't see it that way. And now, now Mike Cruz has the decision to make here, fourth and five. You know, with his kicking game, does he want to try and punt it and put it down there? But I doubt it. I think he goes for it here. No, I mean, Dante Culler came over. Are we going? You know, what are we doing? And Cruz just, just took him and pushed him back out there. Let's go for it and get it. And more because of field position at the 37. Yeah, field position at the 37. Auburn's offense not being that potent this year. You know, feeling like he has to put Keep, this, keep stepping on the gas and keep the momentum. Here's their effort. And it just got loud in Jordan Hare. Intercepted by Auburn. Larry Kasher with the interception. It's his second of the season. 
A nice interception by Larry Kasher, and, 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 you, and you see Kruzek, he's not real thrilled about what happened there, but it was a good gamble by UCF because there's not much that you gain on that play. You see right here trying to get him in, get, trying to get him off the line of scrimmage, running a fade route with Mark Nonson, but the ball's a little underthrown, and Larry Kasher makes the interception. But it is a good, a good defensive back on that play, which Larry Kasher is, but the smart play would have been to drop that one, Andrew, for field position. Because what it's done is it's changed field position. It's almost like a short punt for UCF. If he drops it, they get the ball 20 yards up field a little bit farther. Name a defensive back that's going to drop a chance at an interception as DeMontre Carter. De D'Aubre Devine is there. Deion Porter, the two linebackers there on the tackle for UCF. Nothing for Carter. Yeah, I think you have a point, Andrew. Defensive backs don't drop them because they don't come to, don't come to us that often, except, you know, those of us who have bad hands. Question for you, interception, does it help the momentum? I know if you knock it down, it is, but what about the momentum? Hey, we made a big play against UCF. I think you can look at it that way for the positive spin, but the momentum would have been fine, just as fine, I think, in stopping them on fourth down. The crowd's still into it either way. It's UCF's defense that stopped Carter after just a yard. Second and nine, handoff, big game by the across the 30 and the initial first down of the game for the Auburn Tigers. The freshman from Kenner, Louisiana, Michael Burks with the first down carry. A 17-year-old freshman too, Andrew. This guy won't turn 18 until the middle, until, until mid-December and he's played well for them this year. Great block up front. You see number five, Karsten Bailey. It's not a punishing block out on the corner, but what he did was occupy the defensive back and not allow him to make a play. The tackle had to come from inside out. So receivers blocking is more positioning than it is actual knocking people down. And off to Burks and met there. Damian Dips there to hit. Burks as he hit the middle of that hole. Great play by Damian Demps, who's been very active all year in the run game as a safety. You know, he's the free safety, and you think of those guys playing center field. Damian Demps thinks more like Leroy Butler of the Green Bay Packers. 67 tackles and an interception this year. He's also caused a couple of fumbles, but he thinks more like being up on the line of scrimmage, being, being aggressive is more his game. The only thing you have to be cautious of is play action. But I think it's a gamble that UCF is willing to take because they're not sure that Gabe Gross can hurt him throwing the football. Pickup of one, setting up a second and nine. trips him up, but Burke's able to stumble across the 40, maybe to the 41-yard line. That'll set up a third and short. And one of, the, one of the areas of the game that UCF has struggled with this year has been tackling on defense. They, they, you know, they, they have guys who've been in position to make plays, but they haven't wrapped up real well. In this play, Paul Miranda makes a good open field tackle. It's not textbook, but he gets him down, which is the key to the whole thing, because he doesn't make that tackle. It's probably another 15 more, 15 more yards for Auburn. So it's a good job by Paul Miranda. They've really emphasized tackling, and then today it has to pay off for them. Still looking for his first trip into the end zone. Gene Chizik again because what he called was a run blitz. He he just sold out on that play with his defensive with his defensive players, brought the defensive backs and the linebackers and all the gaps to cover them, figuring that there's no way Auburn is going to throw the ball in that situation, and the gamble paid off. Now they have to kick it away. That will be the first play of the second quarter. One quarter is in the books. And the UCF Golden Knights, led by Damian Demps on defense, the Golden Knights with a 3-0 lead on the Auburn Tigers. Second quarter of play from Jordan-Hare Stadium. We have completed the first 15 minutes. And the UCF Golden Knights have a 3-0 lead on the Auburn Tigers as UCF stuffs Auburn on a third, officially won, will force Auburn to punt. The kicking game, key in any game, maybe a little more so this afternoon. And maybe more so because you've got teams here who are really playing for something big. When I say big, Auburn's playing for their pride right now. At 2-6, and six, they know they're not going anywhere for the holidays. But UCF playing for that possibility. A couple bowl scouts are here today. Citrus Bowl is here. UCF can't go to that bowl. But the Liberty Bowl is also here too. Possibility if the Big East doesn't get, get their number four team eligible. So, you know, playing for a lot of different things. But kicking game becomes important here because now they're in a position, uh, you know, 
uh, field position wise. You look for fakes, you look for big plays because Auburn's offense has struggled so much, they have to force something to happen. Not saying it will here, but you know, it sets it up for the third ball game. Zero's 52 yards on his first punt. This one not nearly as long. Burley with the fair catch. He didn't have enough room. That'll be interference. And UCF will start with outstanding field position for their third drive ahead 3-0. Mike Kruzik talking with Dante Culpepper on the sidelines as UCF comes out for its third drive of the game, leading 3-0 here in the second quarter. First half stats. First half, I meant first quarter. First quarter went so fast, thought it was the half. First quarter stats brought to you by Bob Dance. What I see there, Andrew, leaps out at me is rushing yards for UCF, getting trying to establish the run game, 33. A bunch of that coming with Dante Culpepper breaking out of the pocket and running quarterback draws. And then the pass passing yardage, that's to be expected, 53 to 9. The turnover, UCF does not want to be involved in a turnover battle today. Hopefully that'll be their last one for them. And really not a turnover that hurt them. It was on a fourth down, didn't convert, gave Auburn the ball, but not one of those critical turnovers in their own territory that shortens the field for Auburn. Dante Culpepper, 9 of 12 in that first quarter. UCF leading 3 to nothing. first and 10, called the 35 at the yard line. Culpepper takes the lead off, looking downfield. Pressure, he goes down. Leonardo Carson. It is Carson's six and a half sacks this season. That young man's been playing at a real high level in recent weeks. Had 12 tackles and a sack last week against Arkansas. Now he gets the pressure on Dante Culpepper, who's not able to get away. That's one guy who comes to play every week, Leonardo Carson. Six and a half sacks, seven tackles for losses, and you see he's second on the team. With those tackles, loss of five, second and 15. So the five that UCF got on the interference on the punt is given back. Washington is there. He'll get credit for that sack. Will Washington, it's his fourth. And he needs to go back and hug his secondary for that sack because it wasn't one where they got intense pressure on Dante Culpepper. He just had nowhere to he had nowhere to go with the football. You know, Dante, they blitzed up in the middle there. You see number 54, Haven Fields, coming, picked up. Excellent, but excellent job by the running back, Edward Matt. Then Dante tried to come out there, but he had nowhere to go with the football. And that's where Washington was able to get in there and get the sack. Good coverage back there. Again, zone, the zone coverage by them, but they lock up on receivers if they come into their zones. It's almost like a basketball, you know, a, a, a matchup zone type of principle. UCF has to get to the 45-yard line on third and 24. Dante across the middle. Complete. Nice catch across the middle. Incomplete by Nansan. He had juggled. I thought maybe when he hit the ground, he still had the ball, but he didn't. James Callier was there on the coverage, and Auburn's defense really stepped up. And they really stepped up, and the best thing about it is they brought the crowd into the ball game. It's homecoming. These people haven't had much to cheer about this year. Culpepper throwing the ball across the middle. Hits Nansan right in the hands, but Nansan also looked up and saw Courtney Rose getting ready to lay a lick on him. I think that took his mind off of catching the ball a little bit. Javier Borleggi averaging 39 yards per punt. It's a spiral, but it's shanked, and it goes out at midfield. Best field position upcoming for the Auburn Tigers. Mike Kruzik's UCF Golden Knights ahead 3-0. Auburn first and 10 from the 45-yard line. Gross looking downfield. Incomplete on the pass attempt to Clifton Robinson. That'll bring up a second and 10. And, and you see Gabe Gross going back in the pocket. He's an excellent prospect for them. This young man has a lot of physical tools. Wearing number 22, his father was an all-SEC performer at center here for Auburn, who wore number 55. Gabe wears 22 because, he as he told us, his 55 flipped upside down. So he, so he changed it up, so he's still honoring his father. Kind of interesting. It's an extension. His father was the center, Gabe's a quarterback. Brother Oliver needs to get his offensive group in, in gear as his defensive group has been playing well. And you notice he's coaching from the press box. Yeah, you know, an old defense coordinator, more comfortable up there, has not changed his style since he's become the interim head coach. Three wide receivers are in for Auburn on a second and ten. Here comes Reginald Costa across the middle. Incomplete. That was just flat out dropped by Clifton Robinson. UCF Golden Knights College Football on Sunshine Network is brought to you in part by McDonald's, Orlando Tri-County Restaurants. Did somebody say McDonald's? They're dropped by 
Allen Robinson, Andrew, that does not help a young quarterback. You know, he made the nice throw, wanted to get it to a wide receiver who has done the most damage for them this year, which is Clifton Robinson. Just get the ball in his hands and let him run and make a play. And Robinson had that chance and dropped it. That puts him in third and long. What could have been third and short or maybe even a first down play is third and long. Third and ten. Three wide receivers in for Auburn. In shotgun. Deep drop for Gross. showing the other aspect of his game. We showed his his, his uh, tackling ability earlier and, and talked about how he plays up closer to the line of scrimmage. Drops back into coverage, read the quarterback the whole way, and then you see Clifton Robinson making a nice play, stripping it out. But Jeff Bai, Johnny on the spot, picks it up and carries it and gets even more yardage. This is a common mistake for a freshman quarterback. He's locked onto one receiver the whole way, Andrew. I mean, everyone in the stadium saw it coming, and Depp's made the play. Inside handoff to Grant, and Grant picks up nine, close to a first down. Rob Pate with the tackle for Auburn. We're always talking about key situations, critical moments that happen in a ball game. This is one for UCF. They need points on this drive, Andrew. We talk, I talked about Mike Kruzek being the jockey, the best horse, wants to lead from the front. He does not want three points on this drive. They're in great field position. He wants seven because he knows if he can get up on top of Auburn, as bad as Auburn has been on offense this year, this is their chance to capitalize. Lead from the front. That's been their mantra for the week, and this is what he wants to do out here today. They want seven, not three. I love this situation. It's second and one. There are so many options. Four wide receivers in. Dante. Hill Wright has got the first down. Flags fly in the secondary. Dante got to the 16-yard line, but flags were flying just as that ball was snapped. Our referee this afternoon is Harold Mitchell. Looks like it looks like an illegal substitution call or too many men on the field for Auburn. You know, I mean, I think they may have had too many guys out there. And now Culpepper over there talking with the official. He's going to come out and tell us now. Illegal participation on the defense. 12 men on the field. Half the distance to the goal line. First down. Well, make Brother Oliver very happy because substitution patterns are handled down on the field, and that didn't happen. Good blocking on the front. Dante Culpepper saw a gap and just, just exploded into it. He, did, he ran it just like a running back, not a quarterback. Auburn a little disheveled. They'll call time. Down 3-0 to a driving UCF Golden Knight team. I don't care if you're on the sidelines or in the booth. Bill Oliver does not like what he's watching. No, he's a little exercised up there right now. And legal participation down the bench. He relies on his assistants. He calls what he wants, the, the, the personnel he wants in the game. He relies on his assistants to get them in the game, get the right people. Doesn't want those kind of penalties. But right now, it's first and 10 for, for UCF on about the 14-yard line. I'm guessing he loads up and comes after Culpepper here. He's a, he knows how important the situation is, too, because he knows his offense doesn't move the ball very well. He doesn't want to be down 10 points. So I figure he, he's going to have to come after him here and try and make a big play happen, which the Auburn defense has done time and again this year. 3-0, the UCF Golden Knights lead the Auburn Tigers 11-55 in the second quarter. UCF first and 10 from the 14-yard line. Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn. UCF trying to post the biggest win in school history. Dante Culpepper would love to cap his career on a winning note. Watch the pressure coming from the inside. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they come with their inside linebackers on this play. Here they come. Got ten. Complete. Burling inside the 10. Cut down at the six-yard line by Jason Bray, number four. Golden Knights, that play from the 14-yard line, once again inside the 20 in the red zone are the Golden Knights. Well, that's, that's an amazing point. You know, 82% of the time they're scoring. 29 touchdowns and 7 field goals on 44 possessions. And, and look at the balance. 15 rushing, 14 passing. They're not a one-dimensional team, although people try and label them that because of Dante Culpepper's great right arm. 
second and they're going to call it three officially. They've got to get across the four-yard line through the Golden Knights. Hand off. Grant. Grant is close to that first down. He'll be just a tad shy. With Smith, one of the linebackers, number 42, with the tackle. This will set up a third and short. You know, Auburn is rotating a lot of people inside. We talked about it earlier. It, it tends to look like there are open spaces and gaps in that Auburn front because there's only usually only three or four guys there, but they are plugging those holes with the inside linebackers, stunning to different gaps, and that's what's keeping them in the ball game. Third and very short, less than one. Four wides in. Grant the lead. Tailback. Dante himself. First down. First and goal upcoming for UCF. And, and it really was no other call. I mean, that's that's the, that's the basic, simplest, best call you make in that situation, which now sets them up for first and goal inside the three-yard line. You just run that 250-pound quarterback over one of your strong guards, uh, you know, running over the, you know, the guy they think is pretty good, which is Marcus Jenkins, yeah. you know, <laughs> and go ahead and get that first down. Now you've got four whacks at it. And I'm not, I would not be surprised if this is four down territory in Mike Kruzik's mind. And as I said before, I don't think he's thinking field goal. He's thinking six points. Four wide receivers are in for UCF. Grant the lone tailback. He's behind Dante Culpepper. It goes under center. Here they are coming again on the inside. Maybe they're going to load up there. Don't be surprised if Culpepper tries to run an option or something here to try and get outside that gap. Outside the, the tangle in the middle. First and goal. Taking off too soon is Frank Haynes from the right side. I hate doing that, talking about linemen when they make mistakes. I will make it up to him. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it up to him. He's, he's a good player, and he'll do something good for him later. And what UCF is going to argue is that Auburn pulled into the neutral zone, which pulled those guys off. Didn't work. They gave it a try, but it didn't work. Looked like Dante may have changed at the line of scrimmage. I think he was changing the play there, and that was a long time for his guys to be there. It's almost like a sprinter in the blocks. You ever notice how long they take? If they take too long, someone's going to jump before they, you know, they, they shoot the gun off. It's almost what it appeared there that they were in there so long, those guys needed to get out there and fire off and hit someone. Now that the ball's moved back to the eight, does it change Auburn's philosophy? Uh, I don't think it changes it very much at all. They, you know, they're still thinking that UCF's in four-down territory. They still have to load up and come after them. First and goal, but the ball now at the eight-yard line for UCF. Still with the four wide, still with the lone back, Lance. Dante, keep himself across the five and pick up three. They'll bring up second and goal from inside the five-yard line. James Callier, number 51, the linebacker with the tackle. We talked about them having the possibility of running that option play. You know, usually with the option, the quarterback tends to come a little bit wider, but Dante saw a gap early and just went for it. As big as he is, he knows that he can make some headway in there. Callier tops on this team in tackles. He now has 60 on the season. Second and goal from the five. Burley and Nonsat go up top. Kenny Clark comes to the near side. Goldberg is the tight end. Dante, play stops. No time on the play clock. Second penalty for UCF. What was a first and goal from the three now becomes a second and goal from the 10. And, and they've taken a little bit of momentum away from themselves. They had it going all their way after the interception and a couple of positive plays early there. But now it's almost like they're, they're stuck in place. You know, you take two steps forward, you take two steps back, and they keep ending up back in the same spot. But we're actually back a little bit far. Now Dante's going to take a timeout and talk about it. It was Auburn that was a little unraveled at the start of this drive. Now UCF's looking to keep its composure as Dante will go to the sidelines to talk to Mike Kruzik. UCF leads 3-0, second and goal from the 10 when we return. UCF Golden Knights football on Sunshine Network is brought to you by Primeco. Second and goal from the 10-yard line for the UCF Golden Knights. 
and this scene is reminiscent a little bit of the Purdue game when they had the ball down inside inside Purdue's five and Dante made an audible and threw a ball that was tipped up in the air and was returned for a touchdown by Purdue, which was very unfortunate. Now, on that last one, it looked like Mike Kruzek was a little upset about Dante taking the timeout. I don't know if it's because he audible or they didn't have the right personnel or what, but Kruzek really wants his touchdown. Second and goal from the 10. Four wide receivers for UCF. Dante in the shotgun. Kenny Clark and out of bounds out of the back of the end zone. Nearly intercepted. Maybe I shouldn't have brought that up because it almost looked like the same exact thing happening except it wasn't going to be returned. You know, the ball was tipped up into the air and Auburn defensive back Courtney Rose comes across, makes an interception. Fortunately, he was out of bounds for UCF. Is this forced? You know, I think it is because this is a play that you, you can see the coverage there, you know, and it's behind him. Dante's so confident of his arm, he thinks he can put it in that slot. The only way that ball had a chance of being uh, being caught was to put it on the front side of the receiver and have him make a great catch. Larry Casher, the left cornerback with the coverage. They have to do it again for Auburn. Third and goal from the 10. Looking to the left side. Intercepted! Intercepted, and Auburn's defense comes up huge. Jason Bray in and out of the hands of Sia Burley into the arms of Bray. No field goal, but no touchdown. Reminiscent again of a blown opportunity in an earlier big game, which would have been Purdue. Ball was thrown in the right spot. Burley just couldn't come down with it, and Bray makes an excellent interception. Good job by Burley getting him down so that he can't return the ball because if he, can, if he doesn't get him down, he goes down the sideline for a touchdown. You know, Dante throws the ball. Would have been a good, would have been, it looked like a little tough catch for Burley. He's not able to come down with it, but he does a good job getting Bray down. Big momentum swing. If you're a UCF fan, you mark that play, this possession down because that was an opportunity that was blown. It may come back to haunt UCF later. First interception of the season for Jason Bray, the senior from LaGrange, Georgia. Auburn football, Demontre Carter gets tripped up and comes out to about the seven-yard line. Mike Palmer is there, so is Deion Porter. As Dante Culpepper goes to the sidelines, he just can't wait to get the ball back. Yeah, as big a competitor as he is, he's just seething inside because he wants to go make something good happen. See him, you know, Alan Gooch on the sideline and Mike Kruzek talking to him. Okay, so those things happen. Let's come back and get him on the next go. But everyone has to be intensely disappointed. They came out of it with no points at all. Three interceptions coming into this game, two this afternoon. He's never thrown two in a game this season. Second and eight from the seven-yard line for Auburn. The tailback, excuse me, the fullback for Auburn is Manning Sumner. Marv Richardson, number 87, with the tackle. Fred Harley is there as well for UCF. That'll set up a third and long. And this is a big third down for the UCF defense. They haven't had to play a whole heck of a lot because UCF's offense has controlled the ball. But when they've been out there today, they've played very, very well. And this is a job now for UCF defense to keep field position on UCF's side. They need to keep Auburn pinned here, make them kick the ball on fourth down after this third down possession here. So, you know, everyone has their job and their responsibilities. UCF defense job, keep the ball coming to Dante Culpepper. Eventually, good things should happen. Gabe Gross will call timeout or would have gotten a delay of game penalty that would have sent them half the distance to the goal line. That's over the second time. It's the second timeouts of this first half. As Gross goes over to the sidelines, Auburn was showing three wide receivers and the tight end, Reed Tankersley. But by the time the shuffle, Tankersley came on the field very late. Yeah, I, again, I think it's personnel and who should be in the ball game and all that. You know, Jimbo Fisher is now, the, you know, the de facto offensive coordinator. He's the quarterback's coach, but now the offensive coordinator with Rodney Allison getting fired last week also. So there's been a lot of upheaval here at Auburn, and, and it does trickle down to the players because now coaches have different responsibilities. Maybe they have some coaches who are in charge of some things they haven't been in charge of before, and now they're scrambling to catch up too. And, and, and it's just so tough. I mean, what we're seeing right now is just how bad Auburn has been on offense. You know, they got a momentum turn. You know, things happen, and they run two plays inside, inside, the, inside the guards because they have to run safe plays. They can't really run anything that they get, that they take a chance on. And you saw Auburn earlier this season on a game. We we're looking at last week's game against Arkansas. Keep things very simple, don't they? Uh, they keep things very simple. And I saw them earlier against Ole Miss, the second game of the year, and they were very simple and basic then. But let me tell you, Andrew, compared to now. 
while, it looked like they were running the run and shoot against Ole Miss compared <laughs> to what they're doing right now. So time tap changed. Third and eight. Time for the UCF defense to step up. Three wides in for Auburn. Close. Quick step over the middle. Nearly intercepted by Doster as he tried to hit Eric Lowe. Gabe Gross. Doster almost had his second interception of the year. And I am so surprised by that call by Auburn. You know, they run these two belly plays, and then they come out and let Gabe Gross throw a slant pattern, which in this situation is a very difficult throw for the quarterback. Why? Because UCF's offense is playing tight coverage on them. They're not backed off. They're going to be in real tight. See, so throw a pass like that. Balls get tipped. Balls go in the air. Balls get intercepted. I was surprised that Auburn would even take that chance. Zills from his own end zone. Runs to Burley at midfield. Six-yard return for Sia Burley. You know what's interesting now, Andrew, is that I thought that, that in the Purdue game after the interception and the return that UCF sagged a little bit. That hasn't happened here today. You know, they've had a couple of interceptions. There's Burley, another momentum changer, but even more importantly, a field position changer. You know, UCF was going to have good field position out around midfield if he called for a fair catch. Now they've got the ball down inside of Auburn's 25-yard line. These guys have really stuck with it. We've talked about Auburn's defense, but it's UCF's defense that came up very big on that last play. In fact, this entire first half. Quick hit to Nonson on the near side. Mark Nonson follows some blockers, gets out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Antoine Nolan and Rob Pate there to knock him out of bounds. You know what I liked about that call, Andrew, is the fact that they, they used a nice safe pass to get Dante back into back into rhythm a little bit. You know, they, just a little quick quick hitch to his receiver, give him something he can complete. Burley goes out to block. Nonsant comes back on the quick hitch, makes the catch. You see offensive line number 72, Gillis getting out there, throwing a block also. But what was good about it is it gives Dante a chance to become a little more confident yeah. again. We, you know, we think of him as Superman. Right. You know, and we think that nothing ever happens to the guy. He's a young kid, too. Two interceptions to him early today, do something to pick him back up. Mike Kruzek, he's so adept at the things that he's doing, so in tune with his team. Make sure Dante feels good about things, too. Auburn had to use its last time out in this first half. They did not get the right personnel on the field, and instead of trying to get those people there in time, they just called time out. But they are having trouble substituting on offense and defense. Uh, you know, with everything that has happened here at Auburn, with the coaching changes, and, you know, and, and the fact that they haven't won some ball games, they gave a max effort last week. Week. We watched the film on them yesterday against Arkansas, and they gave it everything they had and still came up short at home. You know, it's also homecoming, so there's some more emotion playing into it for some of these seniors who are used to being very, very successful. Yeah. You know, it, it wasn't that long ago. Matter of fact, it was last December. They were in the SEC title game against Tennessee. It was a 10 win season last ten year. Win 10 win season. They three. were 10 and 3 and won the Peach Bowl against Clemson. So this is a group of kids that's not used to this situation at all, and it's also a group of coaches that's not used to this situation at all. A lot of upheaval, a a little bit of turmoil, a lot of change. As we mentioned, a lot of guys doing things they're not used to doing. That and injuries and there's new personnel. It's not like it's the same guys going through the with new coaches. It's some different personnel as well. Total yards dominant in Central Florida's favor. Second and four. UCF has to get to the 14-yard line. Three wide receivers top side. Taylor on the blitz. Hand off. Back, no gain. Leonardo Carson with the tackle his name a bunch already, Andrew. This, this, this guy this guy is a man. I'm telling you, he is a man, and he is playing so hard. You know, coming up, UCF thought that they caught him in the blitz, and I'll tell you what, if Carson doesn't make this tackle, they really did. He had a chance to pop it and get some, get some positive yardage. Didn't happen for them because of Carson's play. There's the right end, the junior out of Mobile, Alabama. Got a 21-yard touchdown on an interception. the secondary. <laughs> for UCF, again, having to get to the 14-yard line. Here come the Auburn Tigers. Complete to Clark, short of the first down. Pate with the tackle. Fourth down, it's going to be short. Mike Kruzik has shown every inclination towards going for it so far today. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if they go ahead and go for it again. Doesn't have a lot of confidence in his kicking game right now anyway. And again, he wants the seven. He wants the six points, seven with an extra point. He really doesn't want to play for field goals unless he absolutely has to. He replaces Charles Leo, wide receiver with tight end Ben Goldberg. Fourth and two. 
UCF had a fourth down in the first quarter. They threw. The pass was intercepted by Larry Casher. Three wide receivers top side. Hand on. First down, UCF. Edward Mack. And UCF runs for the first down, keeping this drive alive. Rob Pate, number 31, with the tackle. I have to give them credit. They could put up, put a lot of confidence in their offensive line on that fourth down because he sure fooled me. I'm up here signaling to you, Andrew, that they got to throw the ball on these fourth and two situations because I figured that's their best chance of making the first down. Great job. Mike Kruzek playing confidence in the line and in Edward Mack, and it's paid off. First and 10 from the 11-yard line. Again, another give to Mack, and he slips under a tackler inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Good job by UCF's offensive line. Marcus Jenkins, number 71. Ryan Gillis, number 72. The two guards, James Callier, is down at the 10-yard line. He will be attended to. We're the redshirt freshman out of Killian High School in Miami. 15 tackles last week against the Arkansas Razorbacks is what Callier had. Dante comes to the sidelines ahead 3-0. And with the ball inside the 10-yard line, UCF can get a first down at the 1. And what's good in this situation for UCF is they're actually going into the end zone that has their fans. Yeah. You know, you know, there's a good group of fans here from, from the Central Florida area, from Orlando, or from wherever that are UCF people. And, and, and you know, I had heard that UCF had sold out their allotment of tickets, which was around 3,000. And it looks like there's that many people here, maybe a few more. So this is a chance for UCF to go in and capitalize on being able to score in front of their own people. Those are the fans that have come from Central Florida, the Orlando area, here in Auburn. Calgary, the inside linebacker. Making the tackle on Edward Mack. Looks, look, looks like his head whiplashed a lot in there, and then he looks like he got kind of legs may have gotten caught underneath that pile. There were a whole lot of bodies there as he went to make that tackle. You know, shouldn't be able to, we shouldn't make any type of a call here. We just hope that he's not badly hurt. What is up next for the University of Central Florida? Brought to you by Bell South Mobility. Time to go home after this afternoon's game. Homecoming next week. Ball State comes in. Another MAC attack. And then New Mexico is in. Two years ago, UCF went to New Mexico and lost 14-7. And now the return by the Lobos to Central Florida. The return game, this time in Orlando. And that's going to be kind of a bittersweet game. It will be Dante's last home game. Yeah, and I'm sure the people will turn out in force to send him and, and the other and other night seniors off in fine style. I mean, what, what he's done for this program cannot really be measured. Yeah, I mean, you know, they can't thank this young man enough for doing what he's done. The fact that he came back this year to play when he had a chance to go off and make that money, you, know, you just can't underestimate what he's done because he has put Central Florida on the map and given them a chance to get great recruits chance to possibly build some more facilities to increase the fan support to do all these things and put them in a position right now to win a ball game against an SEC club. Dante Culpepper with the numbers. Seems like we become uh, bored if it's not 300 yards <laughs> through the air, but he leads Division 1A. Look at those numbers. Incredible. Total yards per game over 400 yards. I, I love the things that are dotted. I mean, pass efficiency of 178.7. That's ahead of the pace that, you know, the record that was set by Steve Young. Pretty pretty fair quarterback. When he's he still playing? Yeah, I think he's still okay. doing a few things in the, in the NFL. And the completion percentage, he's a little bit ahead of pace of, of the one that Danny Werfel set just down the road in Gainesville. How sweet would that be to have a Central Florida guy, you know, usurp a University of Florida guy in the stats, in the st career statistics? James Callier now on a stretcher. He will be wheeled off, and again, that left knee, it kind of buckled. What a season for him as the redshirt freshman. Again, it was an inside handoff to Edward Mack, and Callier's there on the right. Watch his right knee kind of buckle. Left knee there as well. Really got caught. 
sorry. Really got caught in an awkward position there, and this type of thing you really don't want to see happen, obviously. And we, we hope this young man is not seriously hurt, and we, they, they'll be able to get it back real soon. But if not, he's going to be going through a lot of rehab, and they have a great sports med team here at Auburn. And, you know, with the heart that he has, we know that he'll battle his way back, and we'll probably see him next year. Again from Killian. Jordan Hare Stadium, Auburn, Alabama. My partner here, Charles Davis, <laughs> came in here in 1982 with the Tennessee Volunteers. Hey, Good I, memories, Charles? No, I tell you what, you had to bring that up. That's what I get for telling you the story. We came in here in 1982, and, you know, I told I told you before the game, that's the most physical beating we ever took at the University of Tennessee. The score was only 24-14, but it felt like it was 44-14. This place got loud that day, and I was redshirting, and after the first series, I saw our tight end almost get knocked out by one of their safeties, and I told my roommate, I said, I'm not playing today. I don't care what's going on. I'm 17 years old. I'm going to make sure I go home and see my mama for Christmas. So there was no way that I was going into that ball game at 17. Fortunately, I got over it later and got a chance to play. This place can be intimidating. Second and seven for UCF. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Andrew Monaco. UCF is driving with a 3-0 lead. Culpepper looking right side. Deflected incomplete in the end zone. Witt Smith, the linebacker on the coverage, may have deflected that pass. Rob Pate there as well. We've seen a lot of tip balls in this ball game, Andrew. You know, we've seen a lot of balls. Oh, yeah. and, and, you know, a lot of these times on three-step drops, they teach linemen to block low and chop people down. But they're taking them up high. And what's happening is these guys are still having a chance to get their hands on the ball. And they teach you as a guy rushing, if you can't get to him, stop and get your hands up and make him try and throw over you. Walker's doing a good job with that. UCF is 5 of 10 on third downs this afternoon. They face a third and seven. again for Auburn's defense. A lot of people are probably wondering why UCF seems to go up and down the field, but then you get down inside the 20 and the 10-yard line, things bog down a little. It's because the field becomes constricted. You know, you don't have the option of your wide receivers blowing past the receiver. They have an extra defender, which is which is, which is is the, the out-of-bounds marker in the end zone, the back line. They know they can only go so far. That means they can tighten coverage. It makes things a lot more difficult to run your offense. Fred Wazowski. With a 23-yard attempt, he bangs it home, and UCF with a 6-0 lead. Two Fred Wazowski field goals. UCF is ahead 6-0. Happy that they're ahead 6-0. You know, regretting that it's not a bigger margin. But that's okay for them because at least they came out of it this time with some points. You know, and the best part is they're showing Auburn that this isn't the Central Florida that you're used to seeing. You know, this is a good football team that's going to be there for all 60 minutes. Cruzic on the sidelines with Dante Culpepper and Shia Burley. Auburn got to do something offensively. Still down just 6 nothing. This is a team that feels like, whew, these bullets have been dodged. Hey, they've been dodging them. I mean, I tell you, if this is the wild, wild west, they should be thanking their lucky stars that they're doing that little tap dancing in the saloon while they're getting fired at because good things have happened for them. Only giving up six points, as you mentioned. That means you're just a long run yep. or, you know, a good completed pass away from being back or a special teams play from being right back tied or ahead in the ball game. Javier Borlegi <laughs> to kick off. Keith Cooper, one of the return men for Auburn. Clifton Robinson, the other kickoff returner for Auburn. Borlegi, he set the kickoff. You see up ahead, six to nothing. Snyder on the tackle for UCF. A 21 yard return. Illegal use of the hands on Auburn. That will drive Auburn closer to its goal Locking line. Back in the on the receiving team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. 
and maybe not necessary that block. Yeah, I, I think the guy was probably past him. They teach you all the time if you can see his numbers or if you can read his name, you don't throw that block because that means, you know, he, he's, he's past you. Yeah. He let it go. He makes a tackle, he makes a tackle. At least we're not penalized 15 yards on the play. So, so this is good for UCF because, again, field position kicks right. in for them. Now they get the chance to play defense and make them go the long way. 6-0 UCF. Auburn with the ball, first and 10 from their own 11-yard line. Just about three and a half minutes remaining until the half. Toss, Michael Burks. Burks picks up one, maybe two yards. Mike Palmer there. He's the one who's going to get up. He had the initial. Hit and took Burks off his feet. Tony Rosser with the tackle for UCF. And Rosser will head to the sidelines. Big Tony Rosser, number 92, makes a nice play from inside out coming down the line of scrimmage. That's his seventh tackle of the year. I swear, Andrew, the whole ground moves when, when that big fella gets rumbling, you know? <laughs> when, when that guy comes down the line of scrimmage and he's making a play, I tell you, everything just, everything just shakes. He's got amazing quickness. He really does. He's Tony to Rosser. Move at that size. Second and eight after a pickup of two. Take the inside hand off. Gross. Nearly sacked. Got in trouble. Gross gets back to the line of scrimmage. Deion Porter with the tackle. But the pressure from inside Josh McKibben, he wanted his first sack of the season. And he should have had it. You know, I, I had a great conversation with Gene Chizik Thursday night, and what he told me was, Charles, we've had a chance to make plays, and we've really emphasized when you're in position to make a play, you have to make it. And there was one right there, Josh McKibben. Deion Porter makes a good open field tackle. Good job by him. But it should have been a sack. It should have been, you know, deeper into Auburn's territory where they probably would have gone into their turtle formation, ran a quick dive play, and tried to punt out of trouble. Here they still have a chance to probably try and go and get a first down. And the clock is running. So if UCF does get the ball, it's going to be with less time on the clock. Three wide receivers. Gross will sprint to the left side. Looking downfield. Completes. Clifton Robinson makes his first catch in front of Jeff Fye. That's a time to come up with the reception. Robinson dropped one earlier, but on this play comes in motion and they're able to run against Jeff Fye, runs an out pattern against him, get a little push off there, which is a normal that's a normal by play between the you know the receiver and the defensive back, and this time he makes a great catch. But they just made our point, Andrew. If McKibben gets the sack, right. UCF is probably taking over uh, you know on a punt. Fake the handoff, goes back to pass, a little bit of pressure. He's going to tuck under and run and get to the 35-yard line. <laughs> Raheem Pontiflet with the tackle, and D'Aubrey Devine, the inside linebacker, the middle linebacker with the tackle. Not before Gross picks up six. Now there's a minute 20 remaining, and the clock still runs. Auburn with the ball. Maybe as important for Auburn, they don't give UCF the football back in this first half. Auburn will get the ball to start the second half. Michael Burks caught behind the line of scrimmage, not taken down, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Number 41, Mike Palmer, not going to miss too many tackles. Damian Demps makes the tackle, pushes Burks out of bounds, stopping the clock at 105. That guy's not going to miss many. No, he's really not. He's an excellent football player, and he's one of those guys that you look at and you say he's not big enough, he's not this, he's not that, but he keeps making plays. You know, he, keep, he keeps making plays. It, it, you just mentioned he will not miss many tackles. He will make up most plays when they come to him. And in this play here, because they did get the clock stopped because he got out of bounds, UCF is able to stop him here, look for UCF to take the timeout so they get a chance to get the ball back before the end of the half. It is third and three from the 36. Auburn has to get to the 39. Throws from the shotgun. Incomplete. Karsten Bailey off the leg. How many more mistakes can the Auburn Tigers make? Unfortunately, probably a few more because with the, the, the way that they're going, that sums up the season. I mean, that sums it up right there because things just haven't happened for them very, very well. And with each mistake, they sag a little bit farther. The ball wasn't the best ball ever thrown, but it was also a ball that you have to make that play because you know your team's in trouble. Especially Carson senior. Bailey's a great football player, you know, and he, as you just mentioned, he's a senior. Yep. You have to come up with that football. This gives UCF another chance. There will be less than a minute. Burley, fair catch at the 28-yard line. UCF will have 54 seconds 
in this first half. And they still have a couple of timeouts remaining. Auburn, not a single one. So their substitutions are going to have to be crisp and on time. Talking about Auburn defensively, UCF still with two timeouts in 54 seconds. And they won't get a chance to make very many substitutions either if UCF is going with their quick, off, with their, you know, their no huddle offense that's not calling a lot, taking a lot of time between plays because they won't be able to with only 54 seconds. So whatever Auburn has out here, unless there's a stoppage in play, they probably won't be able to substitute. Right. So they're probably going to go with a nickel package and just go with that. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six. They're going with their dime package. Six, you know, six defensive backs, only three guys up front to rush, and then the two inside linebackers. Four wide receivers. Mike Grant is the lone tailback. Carson gets to Dante Culpepper. Leonardo Carson came around the right side and sacks Dante Culpepper. Seven and a half sacks this season. He's really playing at a high level in this first half, isn't he, Andrew? He sure is. Big solo coming, coming in off of the corner, just won't be blocked. You know, he just beat him on the corner on, on the short side, Frank Haynes, and got to the quarterback. And, you know, 26 seconds now. UCF doesn't seem to be in a super hurry. No. You know, to go here after that sack, that might have taken Mike Kruzek out of the mindset of trying to get anything done. Charles Dorsey, number 91, takes down Mike Grant behind the line of scrimmage, and that will be the final play of this first half. UCF won't even run another play. Nice job by Auburn's defense forcing them into that situation. 6-0 UCF leads Auburn at the end of one half of play from Jordan Hare. The senior on homecoming, Charles Dorsey, with the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. He and Auburn head to their locker room. They have not put a point on the board. Mike Kruzik, UCF head coach, joins us here at the half. Hello, Coach Andrew Monaco, along with Charles Davis. Fellas. Hello, Mike. How are you? Uh, I'm doing all right. Andrew Monaco along with Charles Davis. Mike, can you talk about the defensive effort by UCF? Oh, it's, ex it's exemplary. They've given us great field position, and we just haven't capitalized the way we've done all year. We've just got to regroup at halftime and take take, take advantage of some things they're doing down there. They're not doing anything that we didn't feel like they were, weren't going to do, so we just got to go back and play a little bit better in the second half. Defensively, though, we're doing exactly what we wanted to do. Mike, in the red zone, are they presenting? Are they showing you anything that you didn't expect to see? No, what, not, what's keeping you out of the yeah, end zone? No, you know, we drop a slant. Kenny Clark drops the slant down there we only come away with three points and then we have a couple procedure penalties down there which you know when you get in a third and long situation down the goal line the field's compressed and you can't get vertical on the thing and it makes things tough to, to score down there and uh, it just comes down uh, Charles to executing the offense and do, playing with some boys. Mike thanks uh, for joining us good luck in the second half. Thanks a lot. Bye, Mike, Mike Kruzek of the UCF Golden Knights who at the half have a 6-0 lead on the Auburn Tigers from Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn, Alabama Six nothing, the University of Central Florida shutting out the Auburn Tigers after one half of play. The University of Central Florida Golden Knights come on to the field, ready to play in the second half. Andrew Monaco along with Charles Davis. Well, we get so focused on the offense of UCF. Can't say enough about how the defense has played, really on both sides of the ball this afternoon. It has been a total team effort on both sides uh, here in the first half. And the defensive unit cannot get enough credit because each time they went out there having to shut Auburn down or keep field position, they've done it. Auburn's defense really made the statement first. They did. On a fourth and short play, UCF chose to go for it. Dante Culpepper threw an interception. Didn't hurt them too much because field position didn't change. Then Gabe Gross locking on to one receiver from Auburn. Damian Dempsey with an excellent interception. And you'll see a lot of UCF guys gather to try and help, which was fortunate because Damian fumbled when stripped from the backside, and Jeff Fye was there to pick up the fumble, and UCF was in business. Look, they had a lot of emotion in the first half. The defense became really ready to play and really showed a convoy for Damian Dempsey on that. And then Sia Burley coming back with a punt return to get down. Excellent job by UCF in the first half. 
that translates into a 6-0 lead as we take a look at the stats after one half of play. First downs are lopsided in UCF's favor. The total yards again in UCF's favor. Auburn has not been able to get any ground game going, nor anything going through the air. Dante Culpepper has just 69 yards. Remember, he had 210 last year here against Auburn. The last time he didn't throw for 300 or more yards. Two turnovers. One of them was on the, uh, the fourth down. It was the second interception at the four-yard line by Jason Bray that really hurt. First time this season that Dante has thrown two interceptions in a game. And the penalties have been down. Auburn is the least penalized team in the SEC. And UCF, who has had trouble with penalties in the past, really doing a good job with the penalties. Just those two five-yard penalties for UCF in the first half. Whatever was said at the half, we'll see if it can be translated in execution in the second half. UCF won that first half. 6-0 lead on two Fred Wazuski field goals, 24 and 23 yards. And a terrific job defensively by the UCF Golden Knights. Now UCF will kick off to start the second half. Auburn will get the ball to start the second half. Javier Borleggi. brought to you by Sprints, the most read yellow pages. And not much of a comparison. No, really not much, but I think the surprise is that out of 12, you know, 12 completions for Culpepper, only 69 yards total, and then of course the two interceptions, he's been so efficient and so precise this year that the interceptions are a surprise. Auburn gets the ball, first and 10, from the 32-yard line. Steve Williams, who got the start at fullback with the catch. And they come out right out, Andrew, with a surprise, going to an empty set. They start out with a one-back one back set, and then they emptied him out, meaning they had him in motion to the sideline and end up throwing the ball to him. Ordinarily, when they go with an empty set, that's a quarterback draw with, with Gabe Gross, and that's what the UCF coaching staff over our shoulder was calling for, but this time he threw the ball out to the sideline. Pass complete, just the third completion for Gross, now second and six. Austin Bailey didn't drop that one, did the senior from Noonan, Georgia. First down for Auburn. Another surprise, but probably a good job of play calling by Jimbo Fisher. He needs to take a little bit of pressure off of, off of the run game for Auburn because UCF is really loading up for that. Two safe passes, both of them safe, easy throws for Gabe Gross, help his confidence also, and he made a nice, nice shot there to Karsten Bailey. Back-to-back -back completions, Auburn with a first down. It's third of the game, first and 10 from the 45. Fake the handoff, deep drop by Gross, has time across the middle. Dropped again by Clifton Robinson. It has been a tough afternoon for the sophomore from Naples, Florida. Yeah, that's one of those situations where he hit him in the wrong spot. He hit him right between the one and the five. <laughs> Poor guy. He gave gross and good play calling again by Jimbo Fisher. Now they go with a, you know, a, a, a draw pass play, and he sends it downfield. <laughs> have to make the catch. We've said it before. You don't want to criticize these young men. They're all giving the effort. But those are plays that are presented to them that they have to make. That's a catch that the Collar High School Brad can make. Again, deep drop for a screen. To the 41 yard line before Damian Demps submarines him and takes him down, but not before a 14 yard gain. And when a team has not had much success doing what they need to do, and I'm talking about Auburn's offense, you see how excited they are that they've had a few plays that they've put together and things have run well for them. Again, good play calling by Jimbo Fisher. He faked it, he, faked, he had a draw pass play before, now he fakes it again. This time comes with the screen because UCF really started to come after him on first down. Worked very well for them. Just equaled their total of first downs in the first half as Auburn picks up the second on this drive. Incomplete to Eric Lowe, the senior from Lake Worth High School. Not a chance to make that catch. First half possessions for Auburn. 
except for the interception, they've all been very similar. <laughs> they have, and, and, and you notice not very many plays. Three and out on the first one, only five plays run on the second, two more three and outs, and then the, the biggest drive of the day had six plays. And, and this drive here to start the second half, Andrew, every play has been a pass. I mean, are we, are we looking at Air Oliver here in the second half? <laughs> you said the running shoot in the first yeah. half, which would have made me surprised. He must have heard me about the old Miss thing and trying to go back and get a little more, get a little more flavor to the offense. Four wide receivers. Richardson is there. Miranda gets up off the pile, as does Jeff Malden, sophomore out of Gulf Breeze. Play lost, loses two yards. Seventh tackle for loss for Malden. Very well scouted and very well defensed by UCF. They had a little stunt on there where they, they sent a guy there and crossed him from behind, but they saw Gabe Gross in the situation, and they, it looked like they were anticipating the draw right from the snap. Third and 12. Malden lines up defensively. Third and a dozen. Auburn, one of six on third downs. Three wide receivers in. Screen to Burks. Who's going to tackle in the open field? Fye is there. Harley is there to make the tackle. Well shy of the first down. Number 80, Fred Harley, the sophomore, Cape Coral High School, makes the tackle. And Auburn's forced to punt. And that's excellent pursuit because Fred Harley plays defensive end. And this play here, when he sent it out there, that meant Fred Harley had to come from rushing the passer to coming downfield and making open field tackle. Great job of hustle. Burley's going to look directly in the sun on this punt. He'll let it go. Bounces sideways. UCF gets a break at the 15-yard line. 25-yard punt. UCF will get the football for the first time in the second half, leading 6-0. Dante Culpepper comes back from the sidelines. UCF's first drive of the second half. The Golden Knights leading 6-0. dozen games the last time he's thrown two picks and it's still it's still a ratio that's still just five interceptions to 23 touchdown passes four wide receivers for UCF fake the inside handoff to Grant quick hit to Nonson Nonson gang tackled at the 18 yard line Haven Fields is there number 54 the linebacker going to bring up a second down for UCF this is what UCF has done in the first half, Charles. A little, little bit different than what Auburn did, but, but, you know, only six points resulting out of it. A field goal on their first one when they when it looked like they were going in for a touchdown. The interception inside the 10-yard inside the line, punt, another interception inside the 10-yard line, another field goal, and then right before the half, they just pretty much ran out the clock. Pick up a three on the pass to Nonson, second and seven. Complete. Burley across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Courtney Rose, number 30 on the coverage. Brad Ware also there on the tackle. Noticing what Brother, Brother Oliver is doing is he's leaving six defensive backs in the game at all times now. And he's using his linebackers to help create some pressure along with Leonardo Carson and, and, and Dorsey up front. And Dante Culpepper and his receivers are going to have to show patience. Just find the gaps in the seams in that, in that six defensive back scheme. Make the catch and make sure you hold on to the football. Culpepper, 14 of 21 for 85 yards. Inside handoff to Grant. Grant picks up four to the 35-yard line. Haven Fields, the inside linebacker, number 54, with the tackle. I'll tell you what, Andrew, I can't I can't ex express enough how, how how much I'm watching today and how impressed I am with both teams tackling today. You know, we've talked about UCF earlier in the year where they had a little bit of trouble getting people down and 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 and, and stopping plays from becoming bigger plays. And today, that has not happened. No, it had that opportunity. People have gone on the ground. And as a, you know, that's a credit to Gene Chiswick and his defensive crew because they've obviously put a lot of emphasis on getting it done. Grant picks up four, second and six. Three wides to the near side. Complete in traffic. Sia Burley. That's why he's one of the tops in the nation. He can make catches. It's not all wide open. He can make catches in traffic. And he signals to the UCF fans in the corner of Jordan Hare. 
That's a big league catch because this is not a, a real big guy. You know, he's showing no fear here, making the catch. No one's going to take a lick. Jason Bray came from his corner position. That shows how quickly Auburn reacts on defense also. I mean, that ball was thrown. Jason Bray came off of his coverage to come make the hit on Burley. And Burley's showing his toughness, making the catch. And look at him, still struggling to try and get additional yardage. Have to give the guy a lot of credit. That's his fourth catch. 266 yards in a new school record two weeks ago at Southwestern Louisiana. Grants on the handoff. Mike Grant with Smith, the inside linebacker, number 42 with a tackle. And that's the most room it seems like they've had, the running back has had to run with today for UCF. And Mike Grant made the most of it. And I noticed on that play, Cornell Green was staying with his block, too, and he did it so well. He knocked over the fish. You see Mike Grant, the inside handoff, finds some running room, ducks up inside, covers the ball, gets as much as he can out of that play. And on the backside, Cornell Green was finishing his block. He also finished off the linesman in there, too. <laughs> Grant, the lone back, four wide receivers, fake to Grant, quick hit to Nonsai, Nonsai, going for the first down, wrestled down by Rodney Creighton, ought to be close to a first down. Once again, UCF showing their efficiency on offense, making making nice little, you know, the easy passes that are being made, and then the receivers are also making more out of it than what might necessarily be there. You know, Nonsai here made a nice move to make the first guy miss, and he gained additional yardage on the play. See right there, it, he made Mantuan Nolan come up too far, and he missed him before Creighton had tackled him and took him out of bounds. Third and one. Lee, number seven, is signaling a first down for UCF. Green gets up. Gillis gets up. Laurenti will get up off the pile. Members of the offensive line. It'd definitely be a measurement here. It looked like they had a little trouble on the, on the quarterback center exchange. But it didn't seem like Dante got it clean and was able to come out of there and fire ahead. It looked like he was still battling it. And uh, so Mike Kruzek, if they are short, I, I don't think there's any shock at all about him going for it. I mean, I don't think there's any decision about what, based on what he's done already today. It's fourth and Same short. Same again. Yeah. I think, you know, I think if he handles the ball cleanly and not play probably as a first down, I would be surprised if he'd come right back again with another quarterback sneak and get this first down. UCF one for two on fourth down conversions. Now, remember, they ran on the last fourth down conversion. Eddie Mack picked it up. Mike Grant's in the game this time. He's still trying to spread them out with four wide receivers, one tailback in there. I, again, think about Dante Culpepper. I take my chances with him going up inside. 6'4", the quarterback, under center. Don't worry about time on the play clock. There's plenty. Dante's got it. Got it. Easy. Nice and simple there. you got to drive going. You want to sustain it. You don't need to get fancy or try anything that goes away from the line of scrimmage there when you've got a quarterback that weighs 250 pounds. You take your chances with it, and you go ahead and pile drive up forward. Now you've got first and 10 on Auburn's side of the field. They're 45. If you want to take a shot at something, you got field position on your side to do that. And it wouldn't hurt them because Auburn's guys are creeping up more and more, tightening up that coverage. You know, it might need to take a shot at it deep just to loosen them up a little bit. With three wide receivers to the near side and Grant the lone tailback, Clark came in motion, going over the middle. Pressure, Dante goes down. Haven Fields, the inside linebacker with the sack. It is his first of the season. Oh, that's quick. Yeah, that is real quick. And again, the reason that these things are happening is because they're playing the six defensive back scheme, but they're using their linebackers to run up inside and create blocking mismatches. And UCF wasn't able to pick up Haven Fields, and he came clean on that play. And he got the tackle. And he made the tackle. We've talked about that time and again. When you have the chance to make a play, you have to make it. And most guys have been doing that today. It's rare that guys haven't done that. Also eight, second and 18.
second interception of the year. His first one came against Ole Miss earlier. And in this play, I think what happened was Dante had the ball for so long that he came too late to go across the middle on that one. And coverage was able to get there and swallow it up. Rob Pate had excellent coverage, playing almost like a free safety, center fielder type role. And he was able to break on the ball and make his second interception of the season. His first interception came against Ole Miss. Rob Pate second. Comes here in the third quarter. Gross, handoff. Michael Burks trying to cut to the outside. He does, runs into his own man, cuts back inside. Close to a first down before Fred Harley and Mike Palmer make the tackle. Again, the defensive end, Harley, coming back. First down for Auburn, Michael Burks. You know, if you were to tell people nationally going into this ball, game that the University of Central Florida probably has a better football team than Auburn University. People would look at you a little bit funny, but that's what's been the case today. The problem now for UCF is you can't let a team like Auburn hang around and hang around and hang around with you. That's why points are so imperative for them because they're just one player away from having to sit tied up. Pitch to Burks. Reginald Doster wrestles him down at the 40-yard line. Doster came in third on this team and tackles wrestles down. Michael Burks never got to turn the corner. Great job by the stop troops of UCF. They closed down all the running lanes, just constricted them. You see D'Aubrey Devine coming up inside, nowhere, nowhere to go. And then Doster, excellent open field tackle, nice and aggressive, comes up and takes down Burks. UCF again, their defense rising to the challenge. They've got second in about 13. The senior from Deerfield Beach shows you how to tackle in that open field. Loss of one, second and 11. Foster second tackle for loss this season. Gross across the middle complete. Robinson catches that pass and scorched to the 32-yard line. That'll set up a third and four. D'Aubre Devine, the, the middle linebacker for UCF with the tackle. Clifton Robinson catches one, drops one, catches one, drops one, and now he's able to make the catch. It sets him up for third and third and about four or five. I'm interested to see what Gene Chizik decides to do with this one. I think he's going to bring in an extra defensive back in this situation, probably bring some pressure towards Gross. They don't want him to have a chance to set up and throw the football. In the eye behind Gross, Sumner and Burks. Two wide receivers are in. Robinson comes in motion. Fake the handoff. Here comes Deion Porter. Incomplete. And a flag will fly. The pass intended for Robinson. Question, Charles, was it catchable? to see that one again. Everything went right for UCF on that play except for running into the receiver going going for the football. But they were going after the football here. There's Deion Porter. Great job. And Gross, have to give him credit being able to get to it right there. You know, I don't think that they're going to call an uncatchable ball on that one. You know, that was too much in the field of play. They're going to call the penalty and let it go from there. Yes, on the defense. First down. Five foul. What a break for Auburn. It keeps the drive alive. First and 10 from the 27. You're right. They did everything right, did UCF, on defense. They did everything right except for that final result there and exactly what we anticipated on it. They went with the nickel package, bring in David Bush, and then, then uh, Deion Porter came free on the pressure. Grossman did a great job just getting rid of the football on that play. Should have been an interception. Gross sprints to the right side. Throws too low for Clifton Robinson. It's not Robinson's fault there. And I see, you know, on the play there, it's a one receiver pattern essentially is what it is. They're very basic and simple, trying to give Gross easy throws. So what they did was they sprinted him to the wide side of the field to give him a chance to get closer to his target when he threw the football, and he didn't make a very good throw. For UCF, the tough part is that I just saw Deion Porter go out of the game, kind of holding his shoulder at an awkward angle. And he's been playing at a pretty, a pretty high level for them, so someone has to come in and pick up the pace for him. I think it's going to be Tony Hardman, number 15. Second and ten from the 27 yard line. Take the handoff. Deep drop for Gross. Looking down field. Intercepted by Doster. No, incomplete. Nearly had his second interception of the season. 
pass intended for Karsten Bailey, and Doster tried to keep it from hitting the ground, couldn't get the arms underneath, nearly had a pick. Gave it a good effort. Gabe Gross is having good, t you know, he's having, has enough time in the pocket to throw the football. When UCF has not been blitzing, they have not had much pressure on him. So, so that's something I'm sure Gene Chizik has to be thinking about, you know, going after him. I know he doesn't want to go after him every single play because that can open up the big plays, but I think in this situation, he has to go after him now because you don't want to give him a chance to set up and throw the football. One of seven on third downs is Gabe Gross, who's seven for 17. And they're loaded up on, on the top side of the screen. Here they all come. Doster tripped. Incomplete to Bailey. Fye with terrific coverage. And that's why Jeff Fye's in the starting lineup now. I mean, this guy has really come a long way. He's a transfer from Kansas State who came back to UCF. Wasn't sure if he's going to play football or not. They took, the coaches found him on campus and said, hey, you need to be out here playing with us. And they brought him in. He was a wide receiver at Kansas State. And look at this coverage ability because Gabe Gross, despite the blitz, had a lot of time to throw the football. Robert Baronis from 43 yards. His lone miss was blocked. He is 4 of 5 between 40 and 49 yards to put Auburn on the board. He does. Baronis, 43-yard field goal. Auburn cuts UCF's lead in half. The Golden Knights with a 6-3 lead on the Auburn Tigers. The Auburn Tigers on the board for the first time this afternoon. Robert Baronis, a 43-yard field goal. His 10th field goal of the season. He's now 10 for 11. UCF's lead's cut in half. And Baronis will kick off. Paul Miranda. This is the time that UCF could really use a good return by Paul Miranda, give their offense some good field position and a chance to work. And the last few possessions haven't gone as well for UCF as they've wanted. And they need to make sure they don't take home that all his confidence as they go into the set, as they finish up the second half. Miranda from the three. Miranda across the 30. Miranda knocked out of bounds at the 44-yard line, a 41-yard return. The genius to my right is Charles Davis. He no. called it. <laughs> Every now and then the blind squirrel finds that acorn. I think it's my turn this time. And so here he comes. And Paul Moran, look at him. The best part about that return was watching their special teams wall. All those guys we call locking up on people. You know, we used to call it hatting up. They get a guy in front, helmet in front, hands, everything's all set up. They're walling off people to the inside, walled off people to the outside, gave him a lane to get up into. Baronis with the field goal, making it 6-3. Gets credit for the tackle. He and their runner, Jeremy Zills, with tackle this afternoon. And you don't see that every day. And that's never a good sign on special <laughs> teams. Fake the inside hand off to Grant. Culpepper with a keeper across midfield, and he stumbles to the 47-yard line. He'll pick up eight, setting up a second in shorts. And there's the return with the quarterback counter play. We saw it on the first series of the ball game, and they haven't run it since. Now out of the, out of the shotgun spread formation, fakes the inside handoff, which, which Auburn has seen a whole lot of, and that sure fooled the inside guys. They all fell for the fake. Gave Dante Culpepper Lane to find find some room into the secondary. Give Dante nine, setting up a second and one with the four wide receivers. This time to Grant. First down to the 37-yard line, Mike Grant. Excuse me, make it the 42-yard line, Mike Grant. He'll pick up five. Good inside running play again by UCF. This time Mike Grant just wanting to find first down yard. It should give them a chance to move the chains and, and set up and go at it again. I'm wondering now if Mike Kruzek's thinking because they've had a lot of trouble in the red zone area because the field does get constricted and it's tougher to run your offense, you might want to take a shot at it from out here a little bit more. Try and get a big play where you have some room to operate and get up on top of them. We've really not seen the play yet. Pitch to Grant. Eight is there, and so is Quinton Reese, number 86, with the initial hit to get Grant, but not before he picks up four or five yards. 
the good thing that's happening is that UCS defense does not have to hit the field a whole lot in right. this ball game, and, and they're keeping things, they're keeping things off, they're keeping them off the field. They're well rested when they go out there and play. The tough part of it, the flip side is, with all this offense, you have to come up with more than these six points because that still keeps Auburn in the ball right. game, and they may play a lousy game and still have a chance to win it at the end, which UCF cannot afford to do. Grant picks up five. He now has 31 yards on eight carries. Dante, a couple of steps, complete. Charles Lee, Charles Lee gets away from the defenders to the 22-yard line. A 15-yard gain on the pass to the junior from Homestead. Special delivery from Dante Culpepper to his cousin Charles Lee, and, 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 the good, and this is one of the few times you'll see a UCF receiver or a running back get away from a lot of the initial surge from Auburn. Most of the time when a guy makes the catch, he usually goes down pretty quickly. This time he's able to get away from Brad Ware, and then Nolan and Creighton made the tackle downfield. There's some emotion from the UCF offense. They know there's almost a sense of urgency here. Really want to get a touchdown and start to put Auburn on a, on a real tough position. Four catches for Charles Lee. Dante. Dante down the line. He's taken down. Charles Dorsey, the nose tackle, hit him first. Haven Fields was there. Exemplifying the quickness of that Auburn defense. Dante will lose a yard. Big fellas down in the middle anticipating another play. They've really played a stellar game up, up in the front there. There's Dorsey, Leonardo Carson, Dunlap. I mean, these guys have played really hard all day. And number 91, Charles Dorsey, is a senior out of Dillard High School in Fort Lauderdale. As Floridians dot the Auburn roster, second and 11. Kenny Clark goes in motion. Five wide receivers for UCF. Dante will take off to the 16-yard line before he's dragged down by the senior from Fort Lauderdale. Dorsey with the tackle, the Dillard High School product. Another one of those key plays upcoming at third and four as Dante picks up seven of the 11 yards. This is what UCF has done inside that red zone. Three possessions, six points, two field goals. That one pick of Jason Bray, third and four. Four wide receivers. Grant the tailback. Quick hit to Monson. Monson has the first down. He's inside the 10-yard line. Kenny Kelly with the tackle, but not before Nonsant has the first down. First and goal for UCF. And, and number one, Sia Burley. We're, we're used to calling his name as a pass receiver. Look at his block out front, getting a great block out on the corner to give Mark Nonsant an, av an alley to run into. And, and the best part about that one is not a lot of juking and jiving by Mark Nonsant. Straight ahead, north and south, caught the pass, got up in there and got as much yardage as he could. Good job by the receivers on that one, helping each other. First and goal from the six. Three wide receivers to the near side. Officials call time. There was plenty of time on the play clock. There's just a minute 53 remaining. Auburn uses one of its second half timeouts. UCF driving. First and goal from the six when we return to Jordan Hare. UCF has the ball first and goal at the six-yard line with a 6-3 lead and knocking on the door for more points are the Golden Knights. Andrew Monaco along with Charles Davis. Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn, Alabama. 1.53 left in the third quarter. Mike Kruzik's UCF Golden Knights possibly on the verge of school history. First and goal from the six. Three wide receivers to the near side. Grant the lone tailback. Dante under center. Give to Grant up the middle. Nothing doing there. He may have lost some yards. Haven Fields was there. So was one of the outside linebackers, Ryan Taylor. But Fields having a terrific game. You've seen, a, you've seen a lot of great athletes out there for Auburn side, and you've seen a lot of Auburn pride. You know, they are really bound and determined to hang in there and hang in there and hang in there, and hopefully things will happen. Looks like Haven Fields was hurt on that play. No. 
hopefully that's just a cramp that he got. It, uh, even though it's November, these guys are still out there playing pretty hard. And Haven Fields is playing a lot more now after the injury from Collier. And they Collier rotate around. ACL for Collier, number 51. That's, inside handoff to Grant. Hey. But this is this is a play for UCF, especially in this situation. They, they, they might want to just go ahead and, ta and take it, take and throw it out, because they're not going to get a whole lot in there running straight ahead against them. It, it looked like the injury happened after when he was celebrating. That's why I'm hoping it was a cramp. You know, you hope that he didn't get hurt celebrating a big play that he made and didn't have a, have a serious injury. Palmetto High School in Miami, Haven Fields. The initial hit and the tackle there comes from the right end, Leonardo Carson. Yeah, he kind of submarined. <laughs> that's a real surprise you're calling his name again. Yeah, really. You know, the, the big guy came in, and he was bound and determined to play well today. And he's been playing well for most of this season. Yeah. I mean, he's really picked up the pace. It, it looks like it was probably a cramp, and it's a good sign to see Fields run off because you mentioned before Callier and ACL. Carson. So too bad. Talked about Carson. 23 consecutive starts at right end, and you think he's all SEC. It, it, he should be all SEC. But these Auburn guys should be rewarded well on defense. Don't have any guys on offense, I don't think, but the defense, they should have some people. Second and goal from the eight-yard line. Three wide receivers to the near side. Edward Mack, the lone tailback. Clark across the middle. Culpepper into the end zone, intercepted! The fourth INT of the game. Larry Cashers second pick of the afternoon. UCF comes up empty. Andrew, it came again on a late decision. You know, they always say if you have to hesitate and pump and then, you know, bring it down and throw it, you better make darn sure he's open. And, and again, the first one was across the middle. The second one was in, was in the gap. Dante obviously frustrated. The rest of the team frustrated. They're coming up empty on these great drives. And now we're going to test their mental toughness. We're going to test their resilience because after a while you sag a little. They yeah. haven't done that so far. They have not shown it. This is a situation they have to do it again. They have to keep their heads up and keep going. Michael Burks will get nowhere back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. Tony Rosser clogging up the middle for UCF. The Aubrey Devine and Mike Palmer maybe back to the line of scrimmage. UCF's defense has Auburn pinned down here again. We, we talk about field position. If things go bad, at least if they happen on the right side right. of the field for you, this is great field position for UCF and their defensive team. It's imperative that they keep Auburn down there. They can't let them come out and change field position so that UCF has another shot at it playing on a short field. Gross looking downfield. Over throws Robinson. Not a chance. That'll set up third and 11. I'm watching Gabe Gross play, and I really think he has potential. I think that he's going to be a good quarterback one day, but he needs some better players around him. He needs some people who can make plays so that he doesn't have to make all of them. I mean, he's got a nice arm on him. But right now, you know, the, the guy's getting hit on a lot of plays. Balls are sailing a little high. Then when he does hit guys, it, it, there's a number him. of drop passes, things of that nature. They need better athletes around him, but he has the potential to be a good quarterback in the, in the SEC. He should have more than seven completions. Yeah, it hasn't, it hasn't been just because he's throwing a lot of bad passes that he only has seven. There have been a number of drops today. Three wide receivers for Auburn. Two back setters split. Gross is going to throw from his end zone. Way too high for Karsten Bailey. Not a chance. Not a UCF chance. defense holds. In fact, in three plays, Auburn loses a yard. Great coverage in the secondary. I mean, you, on that play, when he threw the ball, you had two defensive backs breaking on it. He had one from the inside breaking out, one from the outside breaking in. We, we'll see it from what the secondary is looking at downfield. They read all the way. Demp's breaking from the inside, five from the outside. Ball's overthrown. No pass interference. Make them kick it away. End over end punt. Burley's going to let it go. The sixth punt of the afternoon by Zills. End over end. And Burley's looking right into the sun. He was standing at midfield. UCF will still have outstanding field position. UCF Golden Knights College Football on Sunshine Network is brought to you in part by Huntington Banks. Take control of your money. 
raised a good point on the punt return, Andrew. He's looking back into the sun, so that's going to be what I'm going to excuse him on on that play because that's a play the punt returner's got to go get the ball. Yeah. You know, if the sun's affecting him, I understand that totally. You don't want to cause a fumble or a muff that, that can run off of you, but otherwise go get the ball because he just gave up extra yardage. But still at the 41 to start this drive. Dante under some pressure. Completes to Nonsense. Still on his feet near a first down. That sets a completion record for Dante Culpepper. Single season. Pass completions. Mark Nonsense makes that catch. Just set the UCF single se uh, season record for completions, 240. 19th completion of the afternoon. Dante and UCF head to the fourth with a 6-3 lead on Auburn. UCF's at midfield with a second and one as we start the fourth quarter of play from Auburn. Dante keeps himself close to a first down. Good, good field position for the Knights, and hopefully that'll be a first down for Mike Kruzik over there. We were at dinner last night with, with, with Rich Wolf, our producer, and we were talking about what happens into the fourth quarter. Can they keep it close? And I was able to make a prediction that if UCF goes into the fourth quarter, a touchdown or less down, and I was thinking down, they would have enough confidence in themselves that they'd have a chance to win this football game. Didn't say that they would, but they should, you know, they wouldn't sag and roll away, but they're going in up. I think that they now know we belong on this field. We should be able to play with this ball club, and now they know we should be able to beat them. Cole Pepper, quick out. Nearly intercepted by Quentin Reese. Oh, he read it perfectly. If he picks that off, Auburn's in the lead. That's, that's what, that goes back to our point of you can't let a team that you are dominating hang around because then these types of plays are the type that get you. And this is just one of those days for Dante Culpepper. It's one of those days where you just, you almost like you're stuck in mud or something. No matter what you do, you can't make the play that you normally make. And they've let Auburn hang around, hang around, hang around, only up six to three. When you have a chance to put them away, <laughs> that's why people do it. You know, if you talk about people running up the score, forget that anymore. You need it because you never know when you need the cushion. Here comes Auburn. Whit Smith gets Culpepper at the 45. plus here at Jordan Hare looking for anything to cheer about. The inside linebacker, number 42, Whit Smith, gives them something. And again, it's been Auburn's defense. Auburn's defense all day long. We've talked about Auburn's defense. They may be behind 6-3, to three, but they've, that's a credit to them that his score is only 6-3. to three. I mean, they've done a great job. Whit Smith coming clear on, on the blitz. They've spent, they've spent a lot of time, six defensive backs, using two inside linebackers, and they're firing away with those linebackers, usually one or the other, sometimes both, and they may be able to wreak a lot of havoc in the pass game. Redshirt freshman, third and 17. Culpepper goes down. Charles Dorsey. UCF has to punt. It has been UCF on the attack all afternoon, Andrew, but now I'm sensing that the tide's turning a little bit. Auburn's defense is on the attack now. You know, Dante's having, having a tough time throwing the football, had some tip balls, had some interceptions. That last one scared the heck out of him and everyone else who was a black and gold supporter and uh, may have scared the punter too. That's the second shank that he's kicked to death. Goes out at the 30-yard line. Auburn will take the ball at the 30, down 6-3 to UCF. 13-12 remaining in the fourth. Second place on to you. Auburn football first and 10 from the 30-yard line. The UCF defense time and time again has stepped up throughout this game. Big reason why the Golden Knights have a 6-3 lead. The UCF coach. 
coaches. Yeah, Charles Huff on our left, and, and Gene Chizzy, the defensive coordinator, showing a good amount of calm and reserve, but you know their stomachs are just, just churning right now because they need their defense to step up and do it one more time for them. This is this is a very unusual situation. This is a day that UCF offense is relying on the UCF defense to carry them, yep. and, and that just doesn't happen very often. Ordinarily, we're talking the other way around. Can UCF outscore someone? So this is a big day for Gene Chizik, a big confidence builder for his defense if they're able to pull this off. See if they can continue it in the final 13-12. Close, a keeper, Harley down the line. Now the late puts to Burks, and Burks across the 40. He may have a first down. had a flashback there to Auburn of the 80s. <laughs> almost almost seeing Randy Campbell, number 14, is doing the Auburn radio here. I got reacquainted with him. I got to play against him back in the old days. We were talking about how good it was then. It's great for him because they were usually winning. But Gabe Gross, Gene Chizik, talked about how fearless he was. That's, the, that's a pitch they don't teach you to make. You know, when you've run that <laughs> far downfield, usually they want the quarterback tucking away and, and, and holding it. But he thinks he's got a chance to make a bigger play by pitching it. Fearless for a freshman have to give the young man a lot of credit. From Dothan, Alabama, Gabe Gross, the quarterback, now in the shotgun. Here comes UCF. Gross, Gross, complete to Marquis Cooper. He's at midfield and near the first down. And you've got guys making plays now for Auburn that haven't made them. That's Marquis Cooper's third catch of the year. And this was a guy that they had counted on a couple of years ago, thinking he was going to be a great recruit for them and play well. He was, a, he was electric as a freshman when they were running him as a tailback. Now he's not catching very many passes. Only his third catch for the third catch of the whole season, but he stepped up and made a play. And when you have a tight ball game, you start to look for people who are going to step up and make these plays. And sometimes the heroes come from unlikely sources. Second and very, very short. Look at this on second and one. Going for Cooper. Fye is there and breaks it up. And Jeff Fye on the coverage. The fifth pass and he breaks up. Good Auburn play. Took a shot, though. Yes, you're right. That's exactly where I was going with that, Andrew. We've talked about it a little bit. Jeff Fye, excellent coverage. But good call by Jimbo Fisher because he needs to loosen up UCF a little bit. You know, you've got a lot of guys cheating up closer to the line. Got a lot of guys in the boxes, they like to say, maybe getting up on press coverage. Loosen them up a little bit. At least get it in their minds that they have the ability to go past them. Good Five play by back. Jeff Five. He came back nicely on a ball that was a little underthrown. Roman Nelson is the fullback for Auburn on the third and very short. Give to the up back. And he rumbles to the 47 yard line for a first down, continuing this drive. Sophomore out of Fairfax, Virginia, Roman Nelson. Just his seventh carry of the season. Getting the feeling, Andrew, that our old friend, Momentum, is tipped over towards the Auburn sideline right now. This probably won't be a real pretty drive, but they have the momentum, and they're taking the, they're taking the attack to UCF now for probably the first time all day. Can they sustain it after one or two first downs? They've not been able to do that. Gross keeps. Gross still keeps to the 40. Palmer there. Devine is there. Reginald Doster on the backside with the tackle. This is where the UCF defense has to close ranks a little bit, and they're going to need all their guys to step up and make the plays when they present. Gabe Gross getting down the line on the option, little option responsibility. See Doster coming from the from the outside to make the play. Each guy has to know his assignment and the option, because if you don't, one guy misses it. That's where big plays happen. This time they did a good job. The Aubrey Devine coming from the inside out to help him make the play with Doster. On a second and three, Gross with the pitch to Demontre Carter. First down and more. Carter knocked out of bounds by Doster. 30-yard line. The sophomore from Pensacola High School, DeMontre Carter, gets the first down and the drive continues. Just what we talked about, option responsibilities, a lead option, fullback going to the corner to kick out. Rusty Williams, number three. He gets a block on the outside on Reginald Doster, gives Carter, gives, gives DeMontre Carter a chance to get additional yardage before Doster knocks him out of bounds. First and 10 from the 30-yard line. That's what Auburn has done on this drive. Gross, handoff, Carter, hit by the Aubrey Devine behind the line of scrimmage. 
that's what they've been waiting for from D'Aubrey Devine for this season. He's had an okay year. You know, I mean, you, you look at his stats, he's having an okay year. He comes into the game with 37 tackles, but he has no big plays in there, no sacks, you know, no cause fumbles. And on this play, D'Aubrey Devine shoots the job, sh shoots the gap, is able to make a tackle for a loss. Hmm. That goes down as a big play on your sheet. D'Aubrey Devine, 22 tackles last year against Nebraska. A lot of big things were expected of him. That's, that will go a long way towards getting him back on the beam. Lakeland High School, he goes 235, corner under 190. Devine wins that, two-yard loss. Gross, complete to Williams. Williams, fumbled the football! UCF's got it! The turnover and the Golden Knights have the football! Damian Demps, the sophomore from Carroll City, Miami, recovers the fumble. His name a few times today, Andrew. Damian Demp's been involved in a lot of aspects. Gross throwing a little dig route inside to Rusty Williams with motion out of the backfield. Jeff Fye with the strip. So Jeff Fye coming there with the strip from the front side. He had some help from the back side. Could see the number of the UCF player coming in. The Damian Demp's is able to get to the football. That's not when you swarm to the ball. But a lot of guys there increases your chances of picking up loose balls when they happen. Pitch to Mike Grant. Mike Grant down at the 20-yard line. No gain. Charles, it seems like Williams had to, he got caught transferring the football after the catch into the left, in the crook of the left arm. It, he did, and transfer is a, a great word. This, this poor guy, Rusty Williams, started the season on offense. They moved him over to free safety after about the third football game. Telly Embry, who was supposed to start, came up lame this week. He, he couldn't play. Rusty Williams, when they handed us a sheet of paper, said Rusty Williams is going to start at fullback today. This young man's been awfully versatile. I'm surprised he knows which side of the field to go on the way things have gone for him. Is unfortunately the right play had to happen. No game for Grant. Taylor coming up the middle. Dante over the middle. Complete to Kenny Clark. Clark to the 35-yard line. That's a first down. The young man has moxie, doesn't he? I mean, he's thrown four picks today. And a lot of people would say, you know, you throw four picks, I don't know if I want to throw the football anymore. You know, you're young, you're, eh, you know, coach, why don't we run the football? Let's just run and eat up some clock. But he came right back, not an easy throw either, and across the middle where a couple of his interceptions have happened today. And you know that's in the back of his mind. Makes a nice throw. Good play by, by Charles Lee, getting the ball and getting upfield again. First down for UCF. Clark goes to the sidelines. He is hurt after making his fourth catch of the game and the 34th catch of the season for the sophomore out of Ocala Vanguard. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. Four wide receivers for UCF. Fake the inside handoff to Nonsat. Near side, Nonsat across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Flag flies late. There's a flag. came in late, looked like the, the back judge threw that flag. Don't know if he caught a, a face mask or if he, or if he saw that. On the defense. Okay. They, they gave him the less severe penalty on the face mask, but they call an inadvertent face mask. Let's see where, where it happened here. Yeah, there's Antoine Noll, number 13, going after the tackle, and his hand came on and released. And so instead of it getting the, the flagrant face mask and a 15-yard penalty, they gave him the five. That sets up a first and 10 for UCF at the 46-yard line. Fourth penalty on Auburn, a team that is the least penalized in the Southeastern Conference. And only two on UCF, which is, which is a little bit of a surprise because they've had some trouble in that area this year. They've played a very disciplined game as far as that goes. Grant inside across midfield. Grant's up for a first down and 11-yard gain for the senior from Jacksonville. Remember our friend Old Momentum? Yep. Uh, I think he's a little indecisive right now about which sideline he wants to be on. You know, I think he's starting to creep back over and you know, go whisper those nice things in Mike Kruzik's ear again because the offense seems to have it back in gear. And that's a nice run by Mike Grant. We know him as a scat back and a jitterbug. He ran hard on that play. And he ran up in there and ran into a little bit of contact. He's a senior, and he wants to go out with a big win. Oh, you I mean, know that. If they beat Auburn today, that's a signature win for UCF, and he wants to be a part of that. That's the one you hang your hat on. And you remember in your college career. First and 10 from the 42-yard line for UCF. Dante
Okay, now looks right. Incomplete. Pass contended for Kenny Clark. Good to see him back on the field. Yeah, well, we know that that injury is not serious on that one. Good protection. Look at the offensive line. They've had some trouble with some twists and stunts today, but in this one, they stand tall. Gave Dante all time he needed. He delivers the shot downfield. Ball goes through Kenny Clark's hands. Incomplete, fortunately. Had a few balls that have popped up in the air. Those are potential tip drill balls. Yeah. So defensive backs converge and pick it off. Fortunately for them, it hasn't happened and gotten them into trouble on this drive. Defense lined up on the bench. They'd like to stay there for a lot longer. That means the UCF offense will be on the field and continue this drive. Second and ten. Fake the inside hand off the ground across the middle. Incomplete through the hands of Charles Lee. It'll set up a third and ten. Charles Lee. Dante Culpepper is 21 of 32, but the longest pass he's completed, 16 yards. And that's a credit to Auburn secondary because what happens a lot of the time, ball slips right through his hands. He delivered, he delivered the ball in the right spot. It just slipped right through Charles Lee's hands, a ball he should have caught. But it's a credit to Auburn secondary because it means they're tackling well. Because UCF's guys are used to making guys miss and getting more yardage on plays than they should have been when it was just throwing the ball. The tackle who protects Dante Culpepper. Cornell Green, you got to look at the line. Dante across the middle, complete to Grant, short of the first down. Decision time, it'll be fourth and two. 27, Brad Ware on the tackle. Let's see where they place it. They're placing the ball on the 34. So, you know, if it's going to be a field goal attempt, it'd be a 50-something yard field goal. Take a timeout and talk it over. I think they're going to go for it. Grant with the completion. Fourth and two upcoming when we return. Dante Culpepper on the sidelines talking with Mike Kruzik. A fourth and two upcoming. Paige Sessoms, the fullback, has come in. So is the tight end Ben Goldberg. Leonardo Carson on the Auburn side sidelines. Sorry, that's not Carson. I was just going to say, what's Carson doing on the sidelines on the fourth and two? <laughs> that's Jerry. <laughs> About to say, that, that wouldn't be very good. Carson doesn't would come out. No, he, he doesn't. if he does come out, some coach sends him back in. That's exactly right. All right. He doesn't even approach no, the sidelines. No, he doesn't even look at the sideline and look mournful. All right, his idea, he needs to be out there. Fourth and two, huge play for UCF. Never doubt in my mind they're going to go for it. It would have been a 52-yard field goal attempt. They haven't done very well at that so far this year. UCF, two of three. Three on the game, three of seven on the year. Back to the eye behind Culpepper. Sessoms is the fullback. Trying to draw him off sides. Not going to work. They call timeout. See, the interesting thing is that they call timeout. They didn't take the penalty because I don't, I was, I'm surprised he's going to go ahead and punt the ball now. Chad Downey comes on for UCF. Remember, he served as the pooch punter last season. And he was the punter before the they, they did take before the season. Auburn will decline the de yeah. delay of game penalty. So, so they didn't take the timeout. I thought he took a timeout there and was going to come to the sideline and, and, and come out with a play and go for it. They decided to go ahead and did. Auburn just declined the penalty, come trying to trying to hurt him on the angle that he has to try and put the ball out of bounds. Robinson is deep for Auburn. He's standing at the 10-yard line. Downing, not more leggy, punting. High. Robinson will let it go. Great bounce for UCF at the 2-yard line is where Jeff Fye downs the football. What a job by Chad Downey. 31-yard punt. Auburn has to go 97 yards to get into the end zone. Be hugging that guy right there. That's about as big a punt as UCF has ever had because that ball goes to the end zone. Auburn starts at the 20, have some breathing room. Now they've got to go, as you mentioned, Andrew, 90, 98 yards. Yeah, they're going to put it at the two. They put it at the two, 98 yards. What a great, and great coverage there. You see UCF, Jeff Fye, who's been playing all the game on defense. He gets downfield. Erno Kelly also down there. You see Albert Snyder, excellent coverage of that punt. 98 yards for Auburn to try and tie this game up. 7-14 remaining in the fourth quarter. UCF leading 6-3. It's the up back, the full back. 
Gene Chizik, the defensive coordinator. Charles Huff is standing. Chizik sitting and watching. Yeah, and I think on that play, when they ran the belly play with the fullback, I'm sure Gene Chizik's going to think that's too many yards. You know, that's oh, yeah. too many yards on that play. We have to keep them in there. You know, we have to keep them in there. Cannot, get, cannot let them get out of there. Second down. A long five for Auburn. That split behind Gross. Robinson comes in motion. Gross sprints to the right side, looking for Robinson. Incomplete, terrible throw by Gross. Miranda was there on the coverage. A good throw. Robinson has the first down. Nine of 24 this afternoon is Gabe Gross. The UCF fans behind Gross in that picture. Third down conversions this afternoon. Auburn, two for ten. Third and a long five. Auburn has to get to the 12. UCF in their nickel package. Comes the blitz. Gross steps up. Gross has the first down before he is run up by Paul Miranda. As gutsy a run as you will see, Gross from his own end zone keeps this drive alive. Yeah, they, they came with the blitz from the outside. You'll see Dion Porter coming from the outside trying to get, it looks like he gets a hand. Mrs. Gross coming up inside. And Gross, as you mentioned, Andrew, a gutsy run, a couple more missed tackles, which we have not seen much of today from UCF. They've done a good job of tackling all day, but not on that particular run. Excellent job by Gabe Gross getting that first down. First and 10 from the 14. Backs in the eye. Gross, pitch to Burks. Burks, not a lot of room, but he carries to the 23-yard line. He carried Marv Richardson to the 23. Nine-yard gain. And Auburn back with that lead option again using Rusty Williams. But look at Geno James, number 78, getting a nice block on Mike Palmer there. Close to being a hook, but he moved him out and gave, and gave Burks an, an avenue to run into. Lead option, Rusty Williams locking up with Jeff Pye. Good block there. Geno James, their all-conference tackle getting downfield, making another nice block, giving Michael Burks some room to run. There's Geno James, the strong tackle, junior out of Montgomery, Alabama. Burks in traffic. Burks is taken down. Josh McKibben. Damian Demps, who we have called all afternoon in on the play once again. Young man really has played an excellent game and looking again like Gene Chick is going to bring in extra defensive backs. They used the, la the last few times in this situation, they've used some sort of a blitz to try and get inside. And you remember, we reflect back to the first half when he used that run blitz to stop them. Don't be surprised to see something like that again here because Auburn right now, they've had more, more effect from just running the football than they have throwing it third and short and they try and run it again. Bailey and Robinson on the top side. Burks goes in motion to the near side. Here comes Porter. Incomplete to Rusty Williams. Andrew, you can't ask for a better capsule of what the season's been like on offense for Auburn. No, right there again. And Rusty Williams, I can't believe I did. I missed that ball. I can't believe it. This is unfortunate for these young guys because they're all trying so hard. It's almost like when it rains, it pours for them. Sia Burley on the punt from Zills. Burley avoids one tackler and avoid a second. He goes down at the 38-yard line. And Durio Ezel makes the tackle. Sia Burley stay on the field. Wide receiver for UCF. Burley. He has four catches this afternoon. Nonsant leads everybody. Mark Nonsant has nine catches on the afternoon. Burley, Clark, and Lee with four, and Mike Grant out of the backfield has a catch. Partner, got to ask a question. Do you think that this is the drive of the season for UCF? Yes, it is, with 4.20 remaining. You don't ask me anything. You never want my opinion. Inside handoff. Mack gets across the 40 to the 42-43 yard line. 
Garrett Smith with the tackle. These five teams below their season average make it six teams when you add the team in yellow, UCF. Yeah, and Arkansas ranked number 10 in the country coming in today. They really put a number on Ole Miss. Last I saw it was 31 to zip. Florida number five in the country. Tennessee number two in the country. And Ole Miss, you know, with that loss today, came in a good ball club. Only one loss in the Western Division, the SEC. That's an excellent offer in defense. And you're looking at a UCF team that averages 500 yards at 230 this afternoon. It's what's kept Auburn in this game. But Edward Mack, looking to break it open to the 40, across the 40, and he turns to the 35. At some point in a ball game, fatigue sets in, and I'm not saying that the Auburn guys are dragging, but occasionally it happens, and I think, you know, you're looking at a team that has fought and scratched and battled all ball game, and here it is, finally a gap for someone to run into that, that opened and stayed open. Most of the times you see them open, and they were closed very quickly by Auburn's defense. Edward Matt getting downfield, got some good blocks. Look at him running real hard, running over Larry Casher there before Pate and, and, and a whole posse of Auburn guys taken down. Huge run for UCF. To the 36-yard line. Edward Mack picks up 21 on that play. Run it again. Mack to the 25-yard line. He should have another first down. Rob Pate, number 31, with the tackle for Auburn. Now Mack will come out, and Mike Grant will come in. Nice to have two backs who are somewhat interchangeable, both running hard today. Mack, and, and, and he gets the open. But watch him tuck it away, Andrew. You know, he's keeping it real close there. He's thinking, hold on to the football, hold on to the football, because they just don't want to give the ball back to Auburn. 51 yards for Edward Mack on 11 carries. Sophomore out of Valdosta. Four wide receivers for UCF. Grant the lone tailback. Fake the inside handoff. Dante keeps himself. Stumbles to the 20. But not before he picks up five yards. <laughs> to all the folks watching on pay-per-view, watching in the sports bar, to the alumni at the sporting club in Manhattan, New York, what a great afternoon. Great afternoon, and this is the, this is the signature win if they get this, that UCF's looking for to really announce that they're truly on the 1A map. Second and five from the 20, under two minutes in this game. Grant, Collard, may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Charles Dorsey, the nose tackle. The initial hit on Grant. Witt Smith also with the tackle. Auburn calls timeouts. UCF, 151 away from the biggest win in school history. Jordan Hare Stadium, Auburn, Alabama. UCF leads Auburn 6-3, 151 remaining in the fourth quarter. Andrew Monaco along with Charles Davis, our entire Sunshine Network crew here in Auburn, Alabama at Jordan Hare Stadium. UCF. Third down play to keep this drive alive. And in this situation, Andrew, a field goal is fine. You know, you still would love to have the touchdown, but even putting more points on the board would be okay with them. Third and five. Auburn crowd tries to rise to the occasion. Bad snap. Dante falls on it. At the 27-yard line, is it still loose? The shotgun formation, which may be a little bit of a surprise in that situation, but the one thing about Mike Kruzik is that he's always going to run his offense. Dante wasn't able to get, get, get it there. That's it. That was Antoine Nolan and Whit Smith and coming up with the fumble recovery. UCF comes away empty again, and, and we always talk about it. Mike Kruzik said Thursday night, penalties and turnovers, key to the game. UCF has five, Auburn two in the turnover category. Both teams have been penalized much. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Auburn has a minute 43 to go down the field. They start the drive from the 29. Almost intercepted by DeAubre Divine. That would have been Divine intervention. <laughs> yeah, boy, I'll tell you. You are a word 
wordsmith, my partner. You are a wordsmith, but you had it right. And, and again, I go back to what Gene Chizik said. Guys, when we have the chance to make plays, we have to make them. That's it. Right there, you have to make it. It's right there for you. The offer, you catch the football, you can take this one to the house. It's over. Now you see if has to step in and do it again. Right, you got to regroup on second and 10 from the 29. Three wides are in, down the field. Incomplete. It bounced to Miranda. Pass intended for Clifton Robinson. Tell you what, we've had these UCF coaches over our shoulders today, Andrew. And Gene Chizik shows an amazing amount of calm up there. Charles Huff is a very excitable coach, and he's the one that sometimes we, we hear in the background. But Gene Chizik, very calm, very cool right now, focused on the task at hand, calling his defenses. He's done a masterful job today. He absolutely has. Here. The defense has stepped up like it has not done all year long. It has been outstanding. Third and 10 from the 29. Down at the line of scrimmage, flag flies. We're talking holding territory there. Mike Palmer in on that play. The pass was deflected. Face mask on Auburn. It will be declined and set up a fourth down. Against the offense, penalty is declined. You don't get that very often on the left side of our screen. You see number 69, Demarcus Curry, getting his hand up inside there. It is fourth down. Auburn has to go for it here if they have any hope of, of doing anything. They can't punt and, and play field position because they only have one timeout left. So they wouldn't have enough to stop the clock if they wanted to go that route. They have to go for it here. Play of the game, play of the season, play for UCF on the Division 1A level. Blitz, blitz them outside, both linebackers, and then Curry drops off in coverage. What a clutch grab. Actually, throw and grab. Gross to Robinson. That's why you get four downs. That's why you get four downs. And this is a situation where heart and tradition come into play. Because this is still Auburn. This is still an SEC school. And, you know, they may be two and six. But it's homecoming. Their pride is on the line. And they made a play there that you just wouldn't have expected from watching them all day today. First down, complete. Bailey! Flag flies down the sideline! They're going to say Bailey is out of bounds. They threw the flag. It's sitting at the 47-yard line. Bailey took off up the sidelines into the end zone. We all wait. Touchdown, Auburn! Do you believe it? It was a face mask on UCF. Catches, 76 for Bailey, Auburn off the deck. The senior, Karsten Bailey, homecoming, senior day. He had dropped the ball, uh, dropped the ball earlier, you remember? He dropped the ball earlier, that was redemption for him. Baronis, extra point is good, and Auburn with its first touchdown of the game. Karsten Bailey, 58 yards up the sidelines, and Auburn has a 10-6 lead. UCF has to get in the end zone. 57 seconds and two timeouts. Unbelievable. And, and what it's going to take now is a good, another good return by Paul Miranda. They need field position to get started on this. They have two timeouts, and remember, you get extra timeouts. I call them timeouts. They're really not if you get first downs because the clock has to stop with the chains moving. 
but let's go back one more time. What have we said all game? If you let someone hang around, you are one play away from getting beat. And it happened. And that's the, you know, they haven't lost yet, obviously. Right. But that's the problem. You let them hang around, you're one play away from disaster, and that's what happened there. The Aubrey Devine with the drop, you know, the different things that have happened today where you've had a chance to make plays, you make them, you put them away. I always like to look at plays that are key in the drive as we look at Paul Miranda. Bailey does not make that catch without the fourth down catch by Robinson. Exactly. And here in this situation, if you're Auburn, do you kick it to Miranda? I would not. You know, or do you squip it along the ground or something like that? It's going to be a little chess match going now, but the good thing is that UCF knows how to get the ball downfield quickly. So if you've if you got a team with a chance to do it, you would want to bet more on UCF, and this is going to be their opportunity. Baronis. It's going to Miranda at the seven. Miranda across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Way back by the 17-yard line is a penalty flag. And it's going to be a, a, there's going to be a block in the back. I saw it from up here. I was surprised when there was no flag initially because the referee was behind the play, and you would think that he would have seen it. He didn't see it. It was called by somebody who came from 30 yards up upfield the other way. Block in the back. By the receiving team. But you, you know. See, Miranda can see right there on Jason Bray, number 15, Tony Hardman pushed him in the back, and that's going to be the penalty. You know, I would have thought the referee would have called it, but it doesn't matter. It happened. Right. I mean, you know, that wasn't a bad call. It, it happened. Two timeouts. They've got to go now 99, uh, excuse me, 91 yards. The penalty gets marched off from the spot of the foul, not where Miranda was taken down. Well, this is good. It's good that you've got Dante Culpepper under center. He has not played his best ball game today, but he's a senior. He's had big ball games all along his career. Here's his opportunity to rescue his team from a dire situation. Dante, 50 seconds, two timeouts, 91 yards. Complete to nine side. He's taken down by Antoine Nolan. This place has not three and three quarter quarters it's alive this place hasn't rocked like this all season you're right i mean it hasn't rocked like this since sometime last season because they haven't given their home faithful much to cheer about 25 seconds on the snap dante to the right throws complete to charles lee lee taken down he's at the 30 yard line the clock will stop on the first down to put the chains but they have to and hustle. And UCF will use a timeout. Yeah, it's a good, good, good idea using it, using it there. And that's one situation that Charles Lee was trying to make a big play after the catch. It almost would have served him better to catch the ball with the first down and get down, so the clock would have stopped immediately. You know, they didn't gain much from him doing that, but you can't fault the young man. He's, he's trying to make a play. He's trying absolutely. to make a play. You know, that's that's the hindsight 2020 that we get to have up here in this booth. You know, but, but, you've but, become a lot smarter since you've oh, gotten farther hey, from the field. Let me tell you, you something. I, I'm, a, I'm a much better player, much better coach being up here because it's easy. It's easy to do the second guessing. I don't have to make the play when it happens. But turnovers and penalties. Mike Kruzik said it Thursday night on his, on his show. Turnovers and penalties. Penalties haven't been a problem today. Turnovers have. You know, I played for John Majors at Tennessee. He always used to tell us all the time, team, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. And he always talked about turnover margin, takeaways, all that. I was just about to say, if UCF won the game with five turnovers, Dahl Burns two, that's almost a miracle. It shouldn't happen that way. And, you know, and they still have a chance to win it, but that's what comes back to haunt you. 14 seconds. They've still got to cover 70 yards. The crowd tells the story as Culpepper is sacked. Timeout UCF. Time for one last play. They may have to put more time on that clock than two seconds. Dorsey with the sack. I would agree with you, Andrew, but I didn't see anyone making the real emphatic timeout sign from UCF as clock was ticking. I thought for sure someone would be doing that because he got sacked around the nine-second mark. I was watching the clock, and when he went down, it's about nine seconds to go. But here, right now, everyone should be signaling timeout on the replay. You don't see it. 
You don't see it. Dante should be coming up calling timeout. Someone from the secondary should be calling timeout. The interior line, no one was calling it. You know, it's almost like they finally sagged a little bit. And it's a tough situation because that, that play can really take the wind out of your sails. And these kids have one last shot at it. Obviously, it's going to be the Hail Mary, you know, the Big Ben play, the TikTok. Brother Oliver back there, he's got to be feeling pretty good right now because it's going to take a miracle play to get for him to lose now. Want to see Dante's arm strength? We're going to see every bit of it right now. I mean, if he gets a chance to throw it. He hasn't had a chance to throw it lately. Final play. Six win away from the UCF Golden Knights. UCF has come so close, and yet they're so far away from that signature win. Last year at South Carolina, last year at Ole Miss, last year against Mississippi State. So close, and yet still an empty feeling. A very empty feeling. There goes, there goes Brother Oliver, the head coach there, the winning head coach, going from the press box where he coaches. Mike Kruzek shaking hands with the assistant coaches down on the field. You mentioned the, the, the opportunities they had about signature wins. The Purdue game was another chance to make that statement and get a signature win. The UCF felt like they didn't play their best game that day. Today, I don't think they can say that part of it because they played hard. They were, they were very gritty and very tough. They just didn't give themselves the opportunity to put – well, I shouldn't say it that way. They gave themselves the opportunity to win. They just didn't put away Auburn when they had the chance, and that came back to haunt them. That's what got them in the end, and, and my heart goes out to that UCF ball club because they've done – they did everything they could to win this football game today. Bringing up our play of the game, the final minute of the fourth quarter, 58 yards, Gabe Gross to Karsten Bailey. And, you know, it was one of the better balls Gross threw today. And then when, when, when Bailey wasn't able to be brought down there, a couple of missed tackles, this young man has been a playmaker for four years for Auburn. He had had, had, a, better, had, had a great game early, and this time he makes it when he has a chance. Auburn with a 10-6 win over UCF here at Jordan-Hare.